Talmud, Mas Tadat ACHAPT ER I Mishnah when do we begin to make mention of the power of rain our Elizer says on the first day of the feast our Joshua says on the last day of the feast our Joshua said to him seeing that rain on the feast is a sign of God's anger why make mention of it thereupon our Elizer said to him I also did not say to pray but to make mention in the word he causeth the wind to blow and the rain to fall in its due season here Joshua replied to him if that is so one should at all times make mention of it we pray for rain only close to the rainy season our Judah says the last two step before the ark on the last day of the feast makes mention the first does not on the first day of Passover the first makes mention the last does not tomorrow what has the Tana in mind when he teaches when etc the Tana refers to a mission elsewhere which teaches we make mention of the power of rain and the benediction of the revival of the dead and we pray for rain in the benediction of the years and we insert the Havila in the benediction thou favorest man with knowledge with that passage in mind the Tana now teaches when do we begin to make mention of the power of rain would it not have been more appropriate to teach it there why did he leave it until now say rather because the Tana had just completed learning the tractate Rosh Hashanah where we have learned and on the feast the world is judged through water and as there he taught and on the feast the world is judged through water therefore there he teaches when do we begin to make mention of the power of rain but let him teach when do we begin to make mention of rain why the power of rain are you and said because rain comes down by the power of God as it is said who doth great things you and the unsearchable marvelous things without number and it is further written who giveth rain upon the earth and sendeth waters upon the fields where in these verses is this idea Implied Rabbi Bishila replied it is derived from the analogous use of the word Hecha in verses treating of creation here it is written who doth great things and unsearchable and there it is written hast thou not known hast thou not heard that the everlasting God the Lord the creator of the ends of the earth fainteth not neither is weary his discernment is past searching out and of creation it is also written who by thy strength settest fast the mountains who are girded about with might. Whence do we know that mention of rain is to be made in the prayer? It has been taught to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart. What is service of heart? You must need say prayer. And the verse following reads that I will give the rain of your land in its season. The former rain and the latter rain are Yohanan said three keys the holy one blessed be he has retained in his own hands and not entrusted to the hand of any messenger, namely the key of rain, the key of childbirth, and the key of the revival of the dead, the key of rain, for it is written, The Lord will open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain of thy land in its season, the key of childbirth, for it is written, and God remembered Rachel and God here can Talmud, must I be to her and opened her womb, the key of the revival of the dead, for it is written, and ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves in Palestine. They said also the key of sustenance, for it is said thou. Openest thy hand, etc. Why does not our Yohanan include also this key? Because in his view, sustenance is included in rain. Our Elizer says on the first day of the feast, etc. The question was asked, whence did our Elizer derive this? Did he learn it from the lab or from the libation of water? If he learned it from the lab, then just as the obligation of the use of the lab comes into force on the first day of tabernacle, so too should we begin to make mention of rain on that day, or perhaps he learned it from libation. If so, then just as water libation may be carried out on the evening preceding the first day for a master interpreting the verse and the meal offering thereof and their drink offering set even by night, so too should one begin to make mention of rain on that evening. Come and hear our Abab said our Elizer deduced it from the lab. Only some there are who say our Abab had a tradition, whilst others say he based it on the very which is the very that has been taught when do. We begin to make mention of rain. Our Elizer says from the time of the taking up of the lab. Our Joshua says from the time when the lab is discarded. Said our Elizer, seeing that these four species are intended only to make intercession for water. Therefore, as these cannot grow without water, so the world too cannot exist without water. Our Joshua said to him, "Is not rain on the feast a sure sign of God's anger?" Our Elizer replied, "I too did not say to pray, but to make mention. And just as one makes mention of the revival of the dead all the year round, although it will take place only in its proper time, so too should mention be made of the power of rain all the year round, although it comes only in its due season. Therefore, if one desires to make mention all the year round, he may do so. Rabbi says, "I hold the view that when one ceases to pray for rain, one should also no longer make mention of it." Our Judah but there says on the second day of the feast, one begins to make mention. Our Akiva says. On the sixth day of the feast, our Judah says in the name of our Joshua, the last to step before the ark on the last day of the feast makes mention the first does not on the first day of Passover, the first makes mention the last does not did not then our Elizer reply well to our Joshua, our Joshua can answer you it is quite in order to make mention of the revival of the dead all the year round since any day may be its time but is rain seasonable at all times have we not learned should this and terminate and then rainfall it is a sign of God's anger for it is said is it not we harvest today etc. Our Judah be but there is says on the second day of the feast one begins to make mention what is our Judah be but there is reason it has been taught our Judah be but there is says of the second day of the feast scripture says we miss him and their drink offerings and of the sixth day unisaki and its drink offerings and of the seventh day Kemish Padam according to their rule note the letters mem yod mem which Form the word main water here you have the biblical allusion to the libation of water and what makes him our Judah be but there are fixed on the second day because the first of the allusions to the water libation is found in connection with the order for the second day hence why we should begin to make mention on the second day our Akiva says on the sixth day of the feast one begins to make mention for of the sixth day scripture says and its drink offering scripture thus speaks of two libations the libation of water and the libation of wine perhaps both libations must be of wine here Akiva is of the same opinion as our Judah be but there are who said there is an allusion to water Talmud must I if he accepts the view of our Judah be but there are let him also agree with him that one begins to make mention on the second day of the feast our Akiva holds the view that the additional libation occurs in the text on the sixth day it has been taught our Nathan says in the holy place shout Thou pour out a drink offering of strong drink unto the Lord. Scripture here speaks of two libations: the libation of water and the libation of wine. Perhaps both are of wine. If it were so, he should have said either Hasek Hasek or Nezak Nezak. What is the force of the words Hasek Nezak? From this is to be inferred that one points to the libation of water and the other to the libation of wine. Who is the authority for that which we have learned? The libation of water is performed throughout the seven days of the feast. Is it our Joshua? He would have stated on one day only. Is it our Akiva? According to him, it is performed on two days. Is it our Judah? Be there. According to him, it is performed on six days. I can still say it is our Judah. Be there, and he will hold the same opinion as our Judah of the following mission. For we have learned our Judah says a vessel of a log capacity was used for libation throughout the eight days of the feast. But here our Judah be there excludes the first day and. Includes the eighth day. Why does he exclude the first day? Is it because the first of the biblical allusions to water is to be found on the second day? Then the eighth day too should be excluded, seeing that the last of the allusions to water is on the seventh day. It must then be our Joshua. And as for the libation of water being performed throughout the seven days of the feast, this is founded on a tradition for our army said in the name of our Yohanan, in the name of our Nehunya, native of the plain of Beth Hawarden. The laws concerning the ten young trees, the willow of the brook, and the libation of water are laws communicated to Moses from Sinai. Our Judah in the name of our Joshua says the last to step before the ark on the last day of the feast makes mention of rain. The first does not on the first day of Passover. The first makes mention the last does not, which our Joshua is it our Joshua of our mission. Surely he said on the last day of the feast one makes mention, or is it our Joshua of the very surely he said from the day that the lab is discarded and further when it is taught our Judah says in the name of Ben Bethera the last to step before the ark on the last day of the feast makes mention which Ben Bethera is meant is it our Judah be Bethera surely he said on the second day of the feast one makes mention our Nathan bar Isaac replied in both passages cited it is our Joshua be Bethera sometimes he is called by his own name and sometimes he is referred to by his father's name by the one before his ordination and by the other after his ordination it has been taught the sages did not make it obligatory on one to make mention of dew and winds but if one desires to make mention he may do so what is the reason our
Therefore, if in the summer one inserted in the tefillah the words he causeth the wind to blow, he is not compelled to repeat the tefillah. If, however, he said he causeth the rain to fall, he is compelled to repeat it. Similarly, if in winter one did not insert he causeth the wind to blow, he is not compelled to repeat it. However, he did not say he causeth the rain to fall, he is compelled to repeat. And furthermore, even if he said he causeth the wind to pass and the dew to disappear, he is not compelled to repeat it. And taught the sages did not make it obligatory to make mention of clouds and winds. But if one desires to make mention, he may do so. What is the reason? Is it because they are never withheld? But are they never withheld? Did not our Joseph learn? And he will shut up the heaven means in respect of clouds and winds. You say that this verse is in respect of clouds and winds. Perhaps it is not so, but means in respect of rain. When scripture adds so that there shall be no rain, rain is. Thus already referred to what then is the force of the words and he will shut up the heaven it must mean in respect of clouds and winds there will then be a contradiction between winds and winds and between clouds and clouds there is really no contradiction between clouds and clouds in the one case the reference is to early clouds and in the other to late clouds between winds and winds too there is no contradiction in the one case they are normal winds and in the other extraordinary winds but are not extraordinary winds suitable for winnowing in the barn this can be done with seeds independently of the wind attended taught the clouds and the winds are secondary to rain which are the Ola said or as some say are Judah said those that come after the rain can we then say that these are beneficial is it not written the Lord will make the rain of thy land powder and dust and on this Ola or as some say are Judah commented this refers to the wind following the rain there is no contradiction in the one case it speaks of when the rain comes down gently and in the other when it comes down with vehemence in the latter it throws up dust and in the former it does not rub Judah further said wind after rain is as beneficial as rain clouds after rain is beneficial as rain sunshine after rain is beneficial as twofold rain what does this exclude the glow after sunset and sunshine between clouds Rabbah said snow is beneficial to the mountains as fivefold rain to the earth as it is said for he said to the snowfall thou on the earth likewise to the shower of rain and to the showers of his mighty rain Rabbah further said snow is beneficial to the mountain heavy rain to the trees gentle rain to the fruits of the field Talmud Moss tie the drizzling rain herbala even to the seeds under a hard clod what is herbala you are you pile I wake up yet cracks Rabbah further said a young scholar may be likened to the seeds under a hard clod once he has sprouted he soon shoots forth Rabbah. Further said if a young scholar gets into a rage it is because the Torah inflames him as it is said is not my word like a fire said the Lord Arashi said a scholar who is not as hard as iron is no scholar as it is said and like a hammer that break the rock in pieces are Abba said to Arashi you have learned this from that verse but we have learned it from the following verse a land whose stones are iron do not read a bane of stones but will not builders rubbin is said despite this a man should train himself to be gentle for it is said therefore remove vexation from thy heart etc our Samuel be not said in the name of our Jonathan three men made haphazard requests two of them were fortunate in the reply they received and one was not namely Eliza the servant of Abraham Saul the son of Kish and Jephthah the Jalidite Eliza the servant of Abraham as it is written so let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say let down that picture etc she might have been lame or blind but he was Fortunate in the answer given to him in that Rebecca chanced to meet him Saul the son of Kish as it is written and it shall be that the man who killeth him the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter he might have been a slave or a bastard he too was fortunate in that it chanced to be David Jephthah the Jalidite as it is written and it shall be that whatsoever cometh forth out of the doors of my house etc it might have been an unclean thing he however was fortunate in that it so happened that his own daughter came to meet him this is what the prophet had in mind when he said to Israel is there no bomb in Gilead is there no physician there and it is further written which I commanded not nor spake it neither came it to my mind which I commanded not this refers to the sacrifice of the son of Mesha the king of Moab as it is said then he took his eldest son that should have reigned in his stead and offered him for a burnt offering nor spake it this refers to the daughter of Jephthah neither came it to my mind this refers to the sacrifice of Isaac the son of Abraham our bear said the congregation of Israel also made a thoughtless request yet God granted that request as it is said and let us know eagerly strive to know the Lord is going forth as sure as the morning and he shall come to us as the rain the holy one blessed be he said to her Israel my daughter thou askest for something which at times is desirable and at other times is not desirable but I will be unto thee something which is desirable at all times as it is said I will be as due unto Israel she further made another thoughtless request she said before him O God set me as a seal upon thy heart as a seal upon thine arm there upon the holy one blessed be he replied to her my daughter thou askest for something which at times can be seen and at other times cannot be seen I however will make of thee something which can be seen at all times as it is said behold I have Graven thee upon the palms of my hands we pray for rain only etc. The scholars were of the opinion that praying and making mention are one and the same thing who is the authority for this robber replied it is our Joshua who said we begin to make mention of rain from the time when the lulab is discarded Abbe said to him you can even say that it is our Eliza praying however is one thing and making mention is another others have the reading Talmud. Mas Tayanath shall we say it is our Joshua who said from the time when the lulab is dispelled annulled by appealing to Phinehas who was in Gilead for a remission of the vow CF Gen Ravel X carded robber replied you can even say that it is our Eliza praying however is one thing and making mention is another our Judah says the last two step before the ark etc. The following was cited in contradiction to this until when do we continue to pray for rain our Judah says until Passover is over our Meir says until the end of this and our Histo replied the two. Statements of our Judah are not contradictory, the one refers to praying and the other to making mention praying one continues until the end of Passover, but making mention is discontinued on the first day of Passover. Ola said the solution of the contradiction by our Histad is as difficult as vinegar to the teeth and as smoke for the eyes if one makes mention of rain at such times when it is not permissible to pray for it, how much more so should one make mention of rain when it is permissible to pray for it? It must be says Ola that there is a dispute between two Tanaim as to the opinion of our Judah. Our Joseph said what is the meaning of until Passover is over until the first reader on the first day of Passover is over with his prayer said Abay to him, is there then a place in the festival Tefila for inserting the prayer for rain? He replied to him, Yes, the Maturgeman prays does and the Maturgeman ever pray for something of which the community has no need. Therefore the better solution is that of Olorabba said what is the meaning of until Passover is over until the time limit for the slaughtering of the Paschal offering has passed and as at its beginning so at its end just as at its beginning one makes mention of rain although one has not yet begun to pray so too at its end he makes mention although he no longer has to pray Abbe replied I can understand that one should make mention at the beginning seeing that making mention is a form of propitiation prefatory to prayer but as for the end what place is there for such propitiation therefore the better solution is that of Olorabba said in the name of our Yohanan the Halachah is according to our Judah thereupon our Zerah asked our could then our Yohanan really have said so have we not learned we begin to pray for rain on the third of March when Rabban Gamaliel said on the seventh of the same month and with reference to this our Eliezer declared the Halachah is according to Rabban Gamaliel here see replied to him you said one authority against another moreover if you like I will say there is no contradiction the one case speaks of praying and the other of making mention but did not our Yohanan say whenever one prays one should also make mention that rule applies only to the discontinuation of praying but did not our Yohanan say when one begins to make mention one should also begin to pray when one discontinues to pray one should also cease to make mention. There is really no contradiction one statement refers to us Babylonians and the other to them Palestinians why should we be different is it because we have produce in the field they also have pilgrims or Yohanan speaks of conditions after temple times now that you have arrived at this conclusion I can say both teachings apply equally to them Palestinians and there is no contradiction the one speaks of conditions in temple times and the other of conditions after temple times but as for us who observe two days of the festival what shall our practice be Rab says he begins to make mention in the additional service of the eighth day of the feast he discontinues in the afternoon service and in the evening service and in the morning service but resumes in the
Mark Ichman and Laterain in this and he replied, Thus said, Are Johan and this verse was fulfilled in the days of the prophet Joel, the son of Pethwell, that which the palmer worm hath left hath the locust eaten, etc. In that year, although Adar had passed, yet no rain had fallen, and it was not until the first of Nisan that the first rain came down there upon the prophet said to Israel, Go, and so they replied, If a man has a cab of wheat or two cabum of barley, should he eat them and keep himself alive? Or so the men die, he answered, Despite this, go, and so a miracle happened for them, and they discovered whatever grain which was hidden in the chinks of the walls and in the ant holes, they proceeded to sow on the second, on the third, and on the fourth, and the second rain came down on the fifth of Nisan, on the sixteenth of Nisan, they offered the omer, and thus it so came about that the grain which should take six months to ripen, ripened in eleven days to that generation was applied it. Scriptural verses they that sow in tears shall reap in joy though he goeth on his way weeping that beareth the measure of seed etc. What is the meaning of though he goeth on his way weeping that beareth the measure etc. Rab Judah said when the ox is plowing on his forward journey he weeps but on his return journey he eats the young green from the furrows and this is the force of the words he shall come home with joy. What is the meaning of bearing his sheep are his dust said others say it was taught in the very the stock was then one span and the year two spans are nominated to our Isaac. What is the meaning of the scriptural verse for the Lord hath called for a famine and it shall also come upon the land seven years. What had they to eat during these seven years he replied thus said are you in the first year they ate what was stored up in the houses in the second what was in the fields in the third the flesh of clean animals in the fourth the flesh of unclean animals in the fifth. The flesh of forbidden animals and reptiles in the sixth, the flesh of their sons and daughters, and in the seventh, the flesh of their own arms, and thus the verse of Scripture was fulfilled. They eat every man the flesh of his own arms. Further, Arnam and said to our Isaac, What is the meaning of the scriptural verse, The Holy One in the midst of thee, and I will not come into the city? Surely it cannot be that because the Holy One is in the midst of thee, I shall not come into the city. He replied thus, Said Are you had, and the Holy One blessed be? He said, I will not enter the heavenly Jerusalem until I can enter the earthly Jerusalem. Is there then a heavenly Jerusalem? Yes, for it is written, Jerusalem, thou art built as a city that is compact together. Arnam and further said to our Isaac, What is the meaning of the verse, But they are altogether brutish and foolish, the vanities by which they are instructed are but a stock. He replied thus, Said Are you had, and there is one thing that brings about the perdition of the wicked in Gehenna, and that is idolatry's worship here it is written the vanities by which they are instructed and elsewhere of the idols it is written they are a vanity a work of delusion Arnam and further said to our Isaac what is the meaning of the verse for my people have committed two evils were they only two has he then ignored the fact that they were twenty-four here Isaac replied there is one evil Talmud, Mastianet B which is equal to two and that is idolatry's worship for it is written for my people have committed two evils they have forsaken me the fountain of living waters and hewed them out cisterns broken cisterns and further it is written for pass over to the isles of the Kittites and see and sent unto Kedar and consider diligently etc hath nation changed its gods which are yet no gods but my people hath changed its glory for that which doth not profit attend taught the Kittites worship fire and the Kedarites water and although they know that water Extinguishes fire, they have yet not changed their gods, but my people have changed their god for that which doth not profit Arnam. And further said to our Isaac, What is the meaning of the verse? And it came to pass when Samuel was old, did Samuel ever reach old age? He lived only for fifty two years, for a master said, If a man dies in his fifty second year, he is said to have died at the age reached by Samuel the Ram at height. He replied, Thus said, Are you had an old age came prematurely upon him, for it is written, It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king. Samuel complained before him, Sovereign of the universe, you have made me equal to Moses and Aaron, for it is written, Moses and Aaron are amongst his priests, and Samuel among them that call upon his name, as in the case of Moses and Aaron, the work of their hands did not come to not in their lifetime, so too let not the work of my hands come to not in my lifetime. The Holy One blessed be, he replied, How shall I act? Shall Saul die of this? Samuel will not approve, shall Samuel die, young people will speak ill of him, shall neither Saul nor Samuel die, the time has come for David to reign, and one reign may not encroach on another, even by a hair's breadth, thereupon the Holy One blessed be, he said, I will make him prematurely old, and this is what is written, now Saul was sitting in Jabia under the tamarisk tree in Ramah, how comes Jabia to Ramah, this is to teach you that it was the prayer of Samuel the Ram at height that was the cause of Saul's two and a half years sojourn as king in Jabia, should then one man be put aside because of another, yes, for our Samuel be Naman, he said in the name of our Jonathan, what is the meaning of the verse, therefore have I hewed them by the prophets, I have slain them by the words of my mouth, scripture does not say by their works, but by the words of my mouth, this proves that one may be put aside because of another, our Naman and our Isaac were sitting at a meal, and our Naman said to our Isaac, let the master Expound something he replied thus said are Yohanan one should not converse at meals lest the wind pipe acts before the gullet and his life will thereby be endangered after the end of the meal he added thus said are Yohanan Jacob our patriarch is not dead he or Naman objected was it then for not that he was bewailed and embalmed and buried the other replied I derive this from a scriptural verse as it is said therefore fear thou not O Jacob my servant saith the Lord neither be dismayed O Israel for lo I will save thee from afar and thy seed from the land of their captivity the verse likens him Jacob to his seed Israel as his seed will then be alive so he too will be alive our Isaac said whosoever repeats the name Rahab Rahab becomes immediately subject to an onset of issue thereupon our Naman said to him I have repeated it and was not in any way affected our Isaac replied I speak only of one who knew her intimately and recalls her likeness when they were about to part our Naman said Pray, Master, bless me, he replied, let me tell you a parable to what may this be compared to a man who was journeying in the desert, he was hungry, weary, and thirsty, and he lighted upon a tree the fruits of which were sweet, its shade pleasant, and a stream of water flowing beneath it, he ate of its fruits, drank of the water, and rested under its shade when he was about to continue his journey, he said, tree, O tree, with what shall I bless thee, shall I say to thee, may thy fruits be sweet, they are sweet. Already that thy shade be pleasant, it is already pleasant that a stream of water may flow beneath thee, low, a stream of water flows already beneath thee, therefore I say, may it be God's will that all the shoots taken from the Talmud, must I to be like unto thee, so also with you, with what shall I bless you, with the knowledge of the Torah, you already possess knowledge of the Torah, with riches you have riches already, with children you have children already, hence I say, may it be. God's will that your offspring be like unto you. Our rabbis have taught former rain is termed Ura because it warns people to plaster their roofs and to gather in their fruits and to attend to all their needs. Another explanation, it saturates the ground and waters it right down to its depths as it is said, watering her ridges abundantly, settling down the furrows thereof. Thou makest her soft with showers, thou blessest the growth thereof. Another explanation, it is termed Ura because it comes down gently and not heavily, or perhaps it is termed Ura because it causes the fruit to fall and it washes away the seed and the trees. The text therefore adds Makosh latter rain, just as latter rain is a blessing, so too is former rain, or perhaps it is termed Makosh because it raises the houses to the ground and it shatters the trees and brings up the crickets. The text therefore adds Ura, just as former rain is a blessing, so too is latter rain. How do we know that Ura itself is a Blessing for it is written, Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he giveth you the former rain more in just measure, and he causeth to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain. At the first, our rabbis have taught former rain falls in Markishman and latter rain in Nisan. You say former rain in Markishman and latter rain in Nisan, perhaps it is otherwise former rain in Tishri and latter rain in Er. The text therefore adds in its two. Season our Nehila Bid said in the name of Samuel, latter rain is termed Makosh because it is a thing that removes the stiff neckness of Israel. The school of our Ishmael taught it is something that fills the stocks with rain in a berry that it has been taught it is something which falls both upon the ears and upon the stocks. Our rabbis have taught former rain falls in Markishman and latter rain in Nisan. You say former rain in Markishman, perhaps on
Giving a date for the first rainfall is evident seeing that from that date we begin to pray for rain likewise the date of the third rainfall is given because from that date we begin to fast but what may be the reason for giving the date of the second rainfall our error replied it has to do with vows for we have learned Talmud, must hayat be if one interdicts himself by a vow from the enjoyment of anything until the rainy season or until rain has fallen then his vow remains operative until the second rainfall our said it has to do with olives we have learned when is it permissible for any man to take of the gleanings of the field and of the forgotten sheep and of the corners of the field after the nemashat have departed when is it permissible to take of the grapes that have fallen off the branches and of the gleanings of the vine after the poor have left the vineyard and have come back again when of the olives after the second rainfall who are the nemashat are Yohanan said. Old people who walk on a staff, Reshlekish said those who glean behind the gleaners are Papa said the date of the second rainfall is necessary so that travelers should know whether they may walk on private paths across the fields for a master said it is permissible for anyone to walk on private paths until the second rainfall are and B. Isaac said the date is necessary for the disposal of the produce grown during the sabbatical year for we have learned until when is it permissible to derive benefit from the burning of straw and stubble grown in the sabbatical year until the second rainfall why because it is written and for the cattle and for the beasts that are in thy land so long as there is food for the beast in the field you may feed your cattle in the house but when there is no more food in the field for the beast to eat you must withhold food that is in your house from the cattle are about said what is the meaning of rubia that which fructifies the ground this is According to the teaching of Rab Judah who said rain is the husband of the soil for it is written for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither except it water the earth and make it bring forth and but Arabab further said the first rainfall to be beneficial should be sufficient to penetrate the soil one hand breadth deep the second should be sufficient to make of it a stopper for a cask Arhista said when it has rain sufficient to make of the soil a stopper for a cask then the curse contained in the words and he will shut up does not apply Arhista further said if rain came down before the time for reciting in the Shema and he will shut up then the curse contained in these words does not apply Abay thereupon interjected this only holds good when the rain fell before the time for the recital of the words and he will shut up in the evening Shema but if rain fell before the time for their recital in the morning Shema then the curse can still be said to apply for our Judah B. Isaac said the morning clouds have no significance for it is written O Ephraim what shall I do unto thee for your goodness is as the morning cloud etc. said our Papa to Abbe but people say if it rains when the gates are opened in the morning lay down thy sack as driver and sleep this is no contradiction in the one case the heavens are overcast with thick clouds and the other with light clouds Rab Judah said happy is the year wherein the month of Tebeth is widowed some say it is so because the gardens do not lie waste or because the schools are not empty others say because the grain will not become subject to blast is that so did not Arhista say happy is the year wherein the month of Tebeth is muddy this is no contradiction the former is the case when rain had already fallen in the previous months and the latter when it had not yet fallen Arhista further said if rain falls on some parts of the country and not on others then it Curse contained in the words and he will shut up cannot be said to apply is that so is it not written and I also have withholding the rain from you when there were three months to the harvest and I caused it to rain upon one city and caused it not to rain upon another city one piece was rained upon etc and referring to this verse Rab Judah said in the name of Rab both are a curse there is no contradiction in the one case scripture speaks of abnormal rain and in the other of normal rain are. As she said this can in fact be proved from the use of the word Timoter in the verse that is to say it will be a place flooded by rain and thus the interpretation is proved our Rab said when do we begin to recite the benediction over rain when the bridegroom goes forth to meet the bride what benediction should one recite Rab Judah said in the name of Rab we give thanks unto the O Lord our God for every single drop which thou hast caused to fall upon us and our Yohan and concluded it. Benediction thus though our mouths were full of song as the sea and our tongues of exultation as the multitude of its waves etc. until let not thy mercies forsake us O Lord our God even as they have not forsaken us blessed art thou to whom abundant thanksgivings are due abundant thanksgivings and not all the thanksgivings robber replied read the God to whom thanksgivings are due our Papa said therefore Talmud, Mas Tayanatha we should say both the God to whom thanksgivings are due and to whom abundant thanksgivings are due our Rabbi said the day when rain fails is greater than the day of the revival of the dead for the revival of the dead is for the righteous only whereas rain is both for the righteous and for the wicked and he differs from the opinion of our Joseph who said as rain is equal to the revival of the dead the mention of it has therefore been inserted in the section of the revival of the dead Rab Judah said the day when rain falls is as great as the day when the Torah was given as it is said my doctrine shall drop as the rain and by doctrine surely Torah is meant as it is said for I give you good doctrine forsake ye not my Torah Rabbah said it is even greater than the day when the Torah was given as it is said my doctrine shall drop as the rain who is dependent upon whom you must need say the lesser upon the greater Rabbah pointed out a contradiction it is written my doctrine shall drop as the rain and immediately on this follows my speech shall distill as do. The implication here is if the scholar is a worthy person then he is like unto do but if he is not then drop him like rain it has been taught in the Barith Arban I used to say whosoever occupies himself with the Torah for its own sake his learning becomes an elixir of life to him for it is said it is a tree of life to them that grasp it and it is further said it shall be as health to the navel and it is also said for whoso findeth me findeth life but whosoever occupies himself with it. Torah not for its own sake it becomes to him a deadly poison as it is said my doctrine shall drop as the rain and Arafah surely means death as it is said and they shall break we are for the heifer's neck there in the valley our Jeremiah said to our Zerah pray master come and teach the latter replied I do not feel well enough and am not able to do so then said our Jeremiah pray master expound something of an agatic character and he replied thus said our Yohanan what is the meaning of the verse for is the tree of the field man is then man the tree of the field this can only be explained if we connect the verse with the words immediately before it where it is written for thou mayest eat of them but thou shalt not cut them down but then again it is written it thou shalt destroy and cut down how is this to be explained if the scholar is a worthy person learn he from him and do not shun cut him but if he is not destroy him and cut him down our Hamabi Hanan said what is the meaning of it Verse iron sharpneth iron this is to teach you that just as in the case of one iron iron sharpneth the other so also do two scholars sharpen each other's mind by Halachar Rabbi Hannah said why are the words of the Torah likened to fire as it is said is not my word like as fire saith the Lord this is to teach you that just as fire does not ignite of itself so too the words of the Torah do not endure with him who studies alone this is in agreement with what our Jose B. Hannah said what is the meaning of the verse a sword is upon the lonely and they shall become fools this means destruction comes upon the enemies of such scholars who confine themselves to private study and what is even more they become stultified as it is said and they shall become fools and what is more they are guilty of sin for here it is written and they shall become fools and there it is written for that we have done foolishly and for that we have sinned if you wish you can infer it from the following verse Princes of Zoan are become fools, they have caused Egypt to go astray. Our nom and B. Isaac said, Why are the words of the Torah likened to a tree? As it is said, it is a tree of life to them that grasp it. This is to teach you just as a small tree may set on fire a bigger tree, so too it is with scholars. The younger sharpen the minds of the older. This will be in agreement with what our Hannah said. I have learned much from my teachers and from my colleagues, more than from my teachers, but from my disciples. More than from them all, our Hannah B. Papa pointed out a contradiction. It is written unto him that is thirsty, bring ye water, and it is also written, Ho, everyone that thirsteth come ye for water. If he is a worthy disciple, then unto him that is thirsty, bring ye water. But if he is not, then ho, everyone that thirsteth come ye for water. Our Hannah B. Hamma pointed out a contradiction. It is written, Let thy springs be dispersed abroad, and it is also written, Let them be only thine own if he is a worthy. Disciple, let thy springs be dispersed abroad, but if not, let them be thine own. Our Hannah B. Ida said, Why are the words of the Torah likened unto water? As it is written, O everyone that thirsteth, come ye for water. This is to teach you just as water flows from a higher level to a l
to me but are there not good looking people who are learned Talmud, must hayat be if these very people were ugly they would be still more learned another explanation just as these three liquids can become unfit for consumption only through inattention so too the words of the Torah are forgotten only through inattention Arhania be said the day when rain falls is as great as the day on which heaven and earth were created as it is said drop down ye heavens from above and let the skies pour down righteousness let the earth open that they may bring forth salvation and let her cause righteousness to spring up together I the Lord have created it, it is not said I created them but I have created it or Ashai said the day when rain falls is great for on it even salvation springs forth and waxes great as it is said let the earth open that they may bring forth salvation our tenham behind said no rain falls unless the sins of Israel have been forgiven as it is said Lord thou hast been Favorable unto thy land, thou hast turned the captivity of Jacob, thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people, thou hast pardoned all their sins. Sila Ziri of Dahabath said to Rabbanah, You have learned it from this verse, but we have learned from the following verse, then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin, etc. Our tent on the son of our high of Farako said, Rain is withheld only when the enemies of Israel have merited destruction, as it is said, Drought, and he consumed the snow water, so doth the netherworld. Those that have sin Ziri of Dahabath said to Rabbanah, You have learned from this verse, but we have learned it from the following verse, and he will shut up the heaven and yet perish quickly. Arhistah said, Rain is withheld only because of the neglect to bring heave offerings and tithes, as it is said, Drought, and he consumed the snow waters. How is this derived from the verse in the school of our Ishmael? It was taught because you have not performed in the summer the things I have. Commanded you, you shall be denied snow waters in the winter. Our Simeon Bepazi said, Rain is withheld only because of those who talk slander, as it is said, the north wind bringeth forth rain, and the backbiting tongue and angry countenance are said in the name of our Hamana rain is withheld only because of the insolent, as it is said, therefore the showers have been withheld, and there hath been no latter rain, yet thou hadst the harlots for it, etc. Our Sala further said in the name of our Hamana any man whose insolence stumbles in the end into sin, for it is said, Thou hadst the harlots for it, our Naman said, It is evident that he actually stumbled into sin, for it is said, Thou hadst, and not thou wilt have rather the son of our said, It is permissible to call wicked anyone who is insolent, as it is said, a wicked man hardeneth his face, our Naman, the son of our Isaac said, One may even hate him, as it is said, and the boldness of his face is changed, do not regish and change, but yes, you hate it are. Caltanus said rain is withheld only because of the neglect of the Torah as it is said by slothfulness the raptors sank in Umac because of the sloth displayed by Israel in not occupying themselves with the Torah the enemy of the Holy One blessed be he becomes poor Mac actually means poor as it is said but if he be too poor Mac for thy valuation me Korah actually denotes God as it is said who lays Tommy Korah the beams of thine upper chambers in the waters are Joseph derived it from it. Following verse and how men see not the light which is bright in the skies but the wind passeth and cleanseth them and light surely means Torah as it is said for the commandment is a lamp and the teaching Torah is light which is bright in the skies with reference to this it was taught in the school of our Ishmael even when the heavens are full of white spotted clouds ready to cause dew and rain to fall a wind passes and cleanses them or am I said rain is withheld only because of the sin of Violent robbery as it is said he covereth his hands with the lightning that is to say for the sin of violent robbery committed by their hands he covereth the light and hands surely signifies violent robbery as it is said and from the violence that is in their hands and light surely stands for rain as it is said he spreadeth abroad the cloud of his lightning what is then his remedy let a man make many prayers as it is said and give it a charge that it strike the mark be mafkaya and pedia his prayer as it is said therefore pray not thou for this people neither make intercession tip it to me or am I further said what is the meaning of the verse if the iron be blunt and one do not wet the edge if you see the sky hard as iron so that neither do nor rain fall this is to be attributed to the deeds of the generation which are corrupt as it is said and one do not wet the edge what then shall be the remedy let them make many prayers for mercy as it is said then must he Put to more strength, but wisdom is profitable to direct the latter words. Indicate how much more efficacious their prayer would prove if their deeds had originally been righteous. Rush like said, if you see a student Talmud, must I to whom his studies are as hard as iron? It is because he has failed to systematize his studies, as it is said. And one do not with the edge. What is his remedy? Let him attend the school even more regularly, as it is said. Then must he put to more strength, but wisdom is profitable to direct the latter words. Indicate how much more profitable would his efforts be if he had originally systematized his studies. Thus, for example, Rush like made it his practice to repeat in systematic order his studies forty times, corresponding to the forty days during which the Torah was given, and only then would he come before our Yohanan or Adabiyabam made it his practice to repeat in systematic order his studies twenty-four times, corresponding to the twenty-four. Books which embody the Torah, the prophets, and the hagiographer, and only then would he come before Rabbi said, If you see a student who finds his studies as hard as iron, it is because his teacher does not encourage him, as it is said, and one do not with the edge what is his remedy, let him seek many companions to intercede for him with his teacher, as it is said, then must he put to more strength, but wisdom is profitable to direct the latter words, indicate how much more successful he would have been had his efforts originally found favor with his teacher. Or am I further said, What is the meaning of the verse? If the serpent bite before it is charmed, then the charmer hath no advantage. If you see a generation over whom the heavens are rust colored like copper, so that neither do nor rain falls, it is because the generation is wanting in men who pray softly, what then is their remedy? Let them go to one skilled in the art of praying softly, as it is written, the noise thereof telleth. Concerning it, then the charmer hath no advantage means as to him who is skilled in the art of praying softly and does not do so. What benefit has he? But if he has prayed softly and was not answered, what is his remedy? Let him go to the most pious man of that generation that he may intercede abundantly for him, as it is said, and give it a charge that it strike the mark be mafiash and striking the mark pedia his prayer, as it is said. Therefore, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up. Cry nor pray for them, neither make intercession tip it to me. But if he did pray softly and proved successful, and on account of this he becomes overproud, he thereby brings divine displeasure upon the world, as it is said. The cattle also concerning the storm that cometh up, Rabbi said, two scholars who reside in the same city but are intolerant of each other in matters of halacha provoke anger and bring it upon themselves, as it is said. The cattle also concerning the storm that cometh up, rash. Lakish said, What is the meaning of the verse? If the serpent bite before it is charmed, then the charmer hath no advantage in the messianic age. All animals will assemble and come to the serpent and say to him, The lion claws his victim and devours him, the wolf tears him and devours him. But as for thee, what benefit dost thou derive? His reply will be, The charmer hath no advantage. Or am I said, A man's prayer is only answered if he takes his heart into his hand, as it is said, Let us lift up our heart with our hands. But it is not so surely Samuel appointed an amorer to act for him, and his exposition ran thus. But they beguiled him with their mouth and lied unto him with their tongue, for their heart was not steadfast with him, neither were they faithful in his covenant. And yet, but he being full of compassion, forgiveth iniquity, etc. This is no contradiction. The one refers to the individual and the other to the community. Or am I said, Rain falls only for the sake of men of faith, as it is said. Truth springeth out of the earth and righteousness hath looked down from heaven. RMI further said, Come and see how great the men of faith are, as is evidenced from the episode of the weasel and the well. If this is the case with one who trusts in the weasel and the well, how much more so if one trusts in the Holy One? Blessed be here, Yohanan said, He who leads a righteous life on earth below is judged strictly in heaven above, as it is said, Truth springeth out of the earth and righteousness hath looked down from heaven. RMI be Abin in the name of Arhunah. This lesson from this verse and thy wrath according to the fear that is due unto the wretch like said, It may be a from this verse. Thou didst take away him that joyfully worked righteousness. Those that remembered thee in thy ways, behold, thou wast wroth, and we sinned upon them. Have we stayed of old that we might be saved? Our Joshua be Levi said, He who joyfully bears the chastisements that befall him brings. Salvation to the world as it is said upon them have we stayed of old that we might be saved. Rush Lakish said what is the meaning of the verse and
Removal of the pestilence and we will endure the famine thereupon our Samuel B. Namani said to them let us rather pray for the removal of the famine because when the Almerciful gives plenty he gives it for the living as it is said thou openest thy hand and satisfies every living thing with favor how do we know that it is not fitting to pray for two things at the same time because it is written so we fasted and besought our God for this this would indicate that there were other things too. Pray for in the West Palestine it was reported in the name of Arhagia that it could be a from this verse that they might ask mercy of the God of heaven concerning the secret this would indicate that there were other things too to pray for in the days of Arzara there was a religious persecution and fasting was also prohibited Arzara said to his colleagues let us now resolve to fast and when the decree is rescinded we will observe these fasts his colleagues asked him what is your authority for this he replied because it is written and said he unto me fear not Daniel for from the first day when thou didst set thy heart to understand and to humble thyself before thy God thy words were heard our Isaac said if rain falls on the eve of Sabbath and though the years be years of drought as in the days of Elijah it is yet nonetheless but a sign of divine anger this is in agreement with the statement of Rabbi Sheila who said the day when rain falls is as hard to bear as a day of judgment Amimar said were it not that mankind must have rain we would pray and have it cease our Isaac further said sunshine on the Sabbath is an act of kindness towards the poor as it is said but unto you that fear my name shall the sun of righteousness arise with healing in its wings our Isaac further said the day when rain falls is great for thereon even the parrot in one's purse is blessed as it is said to give the rain of thy land in its season and to bless all the work of thy hands are Isaac further said blessing is only possible in things hidden from sight as it is said the Lord will command the blessing with thee in thy barns in the school of Ishmael it was taught blessing is only possible in things not under the direct control of the eye as it is said the Lord will command the blessing with thee in thy barns our rabbis have taught on entering the barn to measure the new grain one shall recite the benediction may it be thy will O Lord our God that thou mayest send blessing upon the work of our hands once he has begun to measure he says blessed be he who sends blessing into this heap if however he first measured the grain and then recited the benediction and his prayer is in vain because blessing is not to be found in anything that has been already weighed or measured or numbered but only in a thing hidden from sight Nemotic gathering of armies charity tithe sustenance or Yohanan said the day on which rain falls is as great as the day of the gathering of exiled Israel as it is said turn our captivity O Lord as the streams in the dry land by streams rain is meant as it is said and the channels of the sea appeared our Yohan and further said the day when rain falls is great for their own even warring armies cease fighting as it is said watering her ridges abundantly settling down the furrows thereof our Yohan and further said rain is withheld only on account of those who subscribe to charity in public and fail to pay as it is said as vapors and wind without rain so is he that boasteth himself of a false gift our Yohan and further said what is the meaning of the verse Talmud Mas Tayyadah thou shalt surely tithe give tithes that you may be enriched our Yohan and met the young son of Reshlakish and said to him recite to me the Bible verse you have learned today the latter replied thou shalt surely tithe at the same time asking what may be the meaning of these words our Yohan and answered give tithes that you may be enriched the boy then asked Whence do you this this our Yohanan replied go test it for yourself the boy thereupon asked is it permissible to try the Holy One blessed be he seeing that it is written ye shall not try the Lord our Yohanan replied thus said our Ashai the case of tithe giving is accepted from the prohibition as it is said bring ye the whole tithe unto the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now here with Seth the Lord of hosts if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall be more than sufficiency what is the meaning of the words that there shall be more than sufficiency our Rami Bihama said in the name of Rab until your lips grow weary from saying it is enough the boy thereupon exclaimed had I reached this verse in my Bible studies I should need neither you nor our Ashai your teacher on another occasion our Yohanan met the young son of Reshlakish sitting and reciting the verse the foolishness of men perverteth his way and his heart Fretteth against the Lord our Yohanan thereupon exclaimed in amazement is there anything written in the hagiographer to which allusion cannot be found in the Torah the boy replied is then this verse not alluded to in the Torah seeing that it is written and their heart failed them and they turned trembling one to another saying what is this that God hath done unto us our Yohanan lifted up his eyes and stared at him whereupon the boy's mother came and took him away saying to him go away from him lest he do unto you as he did unto your father our Yohanan further said rain may fall even for the sake of an individual but sustenance is granted only for the sake of the many that rain may fall for the sake of even one man may be learned from the verse where it is written the Lord will open unto thee his good treasure the heaven to give the rain of thy land sustenance for the sake of the many as it is written behold I will cause to rain bread for you an objection was raised our Jose the son of our Judah says three good leaders had arisen for Israel namely Moses Aaron and Miriam and for their sake three good things were conferred upon Israel namely the well the pillar of cloud and the man of the well for the merit of Miriam the pillar of cloud for the merit of Aaron the man for the merit of Moses when Miriam died the well disappeared as it is said and Miriam died there and immediately follows the verse and there was no water for the congregation and it returned for the merit of it. Latter two when Aaron died the clouds of glory disappeared as it is written and the Canaanite the king of Arad heard what news did he hear he heard that Aaron had died and that the clouds of glory had disappeared he thought that he was free to make war on Israel therefore it is written and all the congregation saw that Aaron was dead with reference to which Arabeo said do not read they saw where you but they were seen where you this is also in accordance with the view of Resh Lakishu. Said the word key may be used in four different senses, namely, if perhaps, but because the two, the well and the cloud, returned because of the merit of Moses. But when Moses died, all of them disappeared, as it is said. And I cut off the three shepherds in one month. Did they then all three die in one month? Did not Miriam die in this and Aaron in and Moses in it? This therefore is meant to teach you that the three good gifts which were given because of their merit were nullified, and they all disappeared in one month. Thus we find that sustenance may be granted for the sake of one individual. The case of Moses is exceptional, as he prayed on behalf of the many. He himself is regarded as a multitude. Our Yunabimano and our Samuel B. E. D. and our High of Wasanya were wont to attend the discourses of Rabba when Rabba died. They came to those of our Papa, and whenever he expounded to them a law which did not appeal to them, they winked at one another and thus heard him greatly. Talmud, Mas in a dream he was made to recite the verse and I cut off the three shepherds when next day these disciples took leave of him he said to them go in peace our Shai my be ashi was wont to frequent the discourses of our papa and used to annoy him very much with questions one day he observed that our papa fell on his face in prayer and he heard him saying may God preserve me from the insolence of Shai my the latter thereupon bowed silence and annoyed him no more with questions Resh Lakish to help it. View that rain may fall even for the sake of an individual for Resh Lakish said once do we this that rain may fall even for the sake of an individual because it is written ask of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain even of the Lord that make lightnings and he will give them showers of rain to every one grass in the field you might have thought only when all need it therefore scripture says to everyone further it has been taught had scripture said to everyone only you might have thought rain would fall only when one needs it for all his fields therefore scripture adds field had the word field been used you might have thought only when the whole field needs rain scripture therefore adds grass this is borne out by the case of Daniel B. Katna who had a garden which he was in the habit of inspecting daily and he would exclaim this bed needs water and that one does not and rain would fall on those beds that needed water what is the meaning of the verse even it Lord that make the Hazizim lightnings are Jose son of our Hanan said this teaches that God provides a Hazizim for each righteous man what are Hazizim Rab Judah said poor Hathar Yohanan said poor Hathar are a sign of coming rain what are poor Hathar Papa said a thin cloud under a thick cloud Rab Judah said should fine rain come down before the heavy rain then the rain will continue for some time should it follow a heavy downpour of rain then the rain will soon cease if before the rain the rain will Continue of this the sieve serves as a reminder if after a heavy rain the rain will cease of this goat's excrement serves as a reminder will a chance to be in Babylon and observing like clouds poor hath he exclaimed remove the vessels for rain is now coming no rain however fell
His discernment is past finding out whose view is supported by the verse who watereth the mountains from thine upper chambers, which are Yohanan interprets to mean the upper chambers of the Almighty, whose view it is that of our Joshua and our Elizer's view as the waters ultimately find their way above Scripture aptly terms them from thine upper chambers. For if it were not so, how will you explain powder and dust from heaven? What you must say is that as these rise upwards from the ground, the words from heaven are quite aptly applied to them. Likewise, as the waters eventually find their way above Scripture aptly refers to them as from thine upper chambers, whose view supports our Hannah, who said this: He gathereth the waters of the sea together as a heap, he layeth up the deeps in storehouses, as meaning who caused the storehouses to be filled with grain. The deeps of view of our Elizer and what of our Joshua's view that verse refers to creation of the world. Talmud, Mas our rabbis have taught Palestine was created first and then the rest of the world as it is said while as yet he had not made the earth nor the fields Palestine is watered by the Holy One blessed be he and the rest of the world is watered by a messenger as it is said who giveth rain upon the earth and sendeth waters upon the fields Palestine is watered by the rain and the rest of the world is watered by the residue as it is said who giveth rain upon the earth etc. Palestine is watered first and then the rest of the world as it is said who giveth rain upon the earth etc. This may be compared to a man making cheese he removes first what is edible and discards the refuse the master said the waters of the ocean are sweetened by the clouds whence does he learn this our Isaac B. Joseph said in the name of our Yohanan it is written darkness of waters thick clouds of the skies and it is also written distilling of waters thick clouds of the skies take away the cough and add it to the word written. With Resh and Red Hat as for our Joshua, what use does he make of these verses? He is of the opinion that these verses are the basis for the statement made by Ardimi when he came to Babylon and he reported that in Palestine people say if the clouds are bright they contain little water, but if they are dark they contain much water, in keeping with whose view is the teaching which has been taught the upper waters remain suspended by divine command and their fruit is the rainwater as it is. Said the earth is full of the fruit of thy works, this is according to our Joshua, and as for our Elizer Dash, he is of the opinion that this verse refers to the other handiwork of God. Our Joshua believe I said the whole world is watered by the residue of the Garden of Eden as it is said, and a river went out of Eden, etc. A tan taught the residue of a core is enough to irrigate a tarkab. Our rabbis taught Egypt is four hundred parasangs by four hundred and it is one sixtieth of the size of Ethiopia, Ethiopia. Is one sixtieth of the world, and the world is one sixtieth of the Garden of Eden, and the Garden is one sixteenth of Eden, and Eden is one sixtieth of Gehenna. Thus, the whole world compared with the Gehenna is but as a lid to the pot. Some say that Gehenna has no limit in size, others say that Eden is without limit. Our Ashai said, What is the meaning of the verse, O thou that dwellest upon many waters abundant in treasures? What has brought it about that Babylon's treasures are full of corn because it dwells by many waters? Rab said, Babylon is rich because it harvests without rain. Abay said, We have a tradition better is a flooded land than an arid land. Mission on the third of March, when we begin to pray for rain, our Gamaliel says on the seventh, that is fifteen days after the feast, so that the last Israelite may reach the river Euphrates. Gamar our Eliezer said, The Halachah is according to our Gamaliel, it has been taught. Hananiah says, In the diaspora, we do not begin to pray until the 60th day after the Tishri cycle, Arhu Nabihai said in the name of Samuel, the Halachah is according to Hananiah, is it really so? Was not a question asked of Samuel when do we begin to make mention of the words and give due and rain? And he replied, When wood is brought into the house of Tabut the fowler, perhaps the two time limits are identical. A question was asked in the school, Is the 60th day counted with those that precede it or with those that follow it? Come and your rap said it. 60th day is counted with those that follow it, and Samuel said, With those that precede it, Arnam and said the mnemonic for this is the highlands need water, but the lowlands do not. Our Papa said the Halachah is that the 60th day is counted with those that follow it. Mishnah, if the 17th of March when came and no rain fell, the Yahadim individuals begin to fast three fasts, they may eat and drink after it gets dark, and on these fasts, it is permissible for them to do work to bathe too. Anoint themselves with oil to wear shoes and to have a tabernacles may reach home without being inconvenienced by the rain marital relations if the new moon of Kislev came and no rain fell the Beth did ordain upon the community three fasts on these they may eat and drink whilst it is still dark and it is permissible to do work to bathe to anoint oneself with oil to wear shoes and to have marital relations Gemara who are the Yehidim Arhuna said the rabbis Arhuna further said the Yehidim fast. Three fasts that is to say on Monday Thursday and Monday what new fact does he teach us has it not already been taught to us no fast is ordained upon the community to begin on a Thursday in order to prevent a rise in food prices hence the order of the first three fasts must be Monday Thursday Monday you might have thought that this applies only to public fasts but not to those of individuals therefore he teaches us that it applies equally to those of individuals the same has been taught us. Elsewhere, when the Yehidim begin to fast, they fast on Monday, Thursday, and Monday, and they interrupt their fast on New Moon Talmud, Mas Tayanapi, and on such festive days as are enumerated in the scroll of fast, the rabbis have taught, Let not a man say, I am but a disciple, and I am therefore not worthy to consider myself a Yahid, since all disciples of the wise are accounted Yehidim, who is a Yahid, and who is a disciple. A Yahid is one worthy to be appointed leader of the community. A disciple is one who is asked any question of Halacha connected with his studies and can answer it, even though it is on a subject dealt with in the tractate. Kalar rabbis have taught, Not everyone desires to consider himself a Yahid, may do so. A disciple, however, may do so. This is the opinion of our Mayor Jose says, Anyone may do so, and may he be remembered for good, because it is not an advantage to him, but a hardship. Another the teaches, Not everyone desires to consider himself a Yahid, may do so. Disciple, however, may do so. This is the opinion of our Simeon, son of our Eliezer. Our Simeon B. Gamaliel says this only applies to things which are to his distinction, but in things which cause him hardship, anyone may do so, and may he be remembered for good because it is not an advantage to him, but a hardship. Our rabbis have taught if one fasted on account of some visitation and it passed, or for a sick person and he recovered, he should nevertheless complete his fast if one journeys from a place where they do not fast to a place where they do, he should fast with them from a place where they do fast to a place where they do not, he should nevertheless complete his fast if he forgot and ate and drank, let him not make it patent in public, nor may he indulge in delicacies as it is written. And Jacob said to his sons, Why should you show yourself? Jacob conveyed thereby to his sons, When you are fully sated, do not show yourselves either before Esau or before Ishmael that they should not envy you. See. That ye fall not out by the way our Eliezer said Joseph said to his brethren do not busy yourselves with questions of law lest the road become uncertain for you you lose the way is it really so did not our Elia be I say two scholars who are journeying on the road and they do not discuss words of Torah merit to be devoured by fire as it written and it came to pass as they still went on and talked that behold there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire which parted them asunder. They parted asunder only because they talked of Torah but if they had not talked they would have merited to be devoured by fire there is no contradiction the latter case speaks of repeating one's studies and the former of cogitation a taught Joseph said to his brethren do not take big strides and bring the sun into the city do not take big strides for a master said big strides rob a man of one five hundred part of his eyesight and bring the sun into the city as Rab Judah said in. The name of Rab let a man always leave the city by daylight and enter it by daylight as it is said as soon as the morning was light the men were sent away Rab Judah said in the name of our high he who journeys on the road should not eat more than one eats in years of famine why here in Babylonia they explained the reason to be in order to prevent digestive troubles but in Palestine they said in order to make his provisions last throughout the whole journey what is the difference between the two reasons the difference is Talmud, Mastayana the apparent in the case of a man on board ship or of a man journeying from one into another our Papa ate a piece of bread at every part saying he was therefore of the opinion that the reason is in order to prevent digestive troubles Rab Judah said in the name of Rab he who starves himself in years of famine escapes on natural death
Rather a man should share in the distress of the community for so we find that Moses our teacher shared in the distress of the community as it is said but Moses hands were heavy and they took a stone and put it under him and he sat thereon did not then Moses have a bolster or a cushion to sit on this is then what Moses meant to convey as Israel are in distress I too will share with them he who shares in the distress of the community will merit to behold its consolation perhaps a man will say who is there to testify against me the very stones of his house and its beams testify against him as it is written for the stone shall cry out of the wall and the beam out of the timber shall answer it in the school of Arshila it was taught the two ministering angels who accompany every man testify against him as it is said for he will give his angels charge over the earth it says a man's own soul testifies against him as it is said keep the doors of thy mouth from her that in thy bosom and some say a man's own limbs testify against him as it is said here are my witnesses saith the Lord a God of faithfulness and without iniquity a God of faithfulness just as punishment will be exacted of the wicked in the world to come even for a slight transgression which they commit so too is punishment exacted in this world of the righteous for any slight transgression which they commit and without iniquity just as the righteous will receive their reward in the world to come even for the least meritorious act which they do so too are the wicked rewarded in this world even for the least meritorious act which they do just and right is he that the rabbi said when a man departs to his eternal home all his deeds are enumerated before him and he is told such and such a thing have you done in such and such a place on that particular day and he replies yes then they say to him sign and he signs as it is said he sealeth up the hand of every man and what is even more he acknowledges the justice of the verdict and he says you have judged me well in order that the words of scripture may be fulfilled that thou mayest be justified when thou speakest Samuel said whosoever fasts for the sake of self-affliction is termed a sinner he is of the same opinion as the following tana for it has been taught Eliezer Hakab Rabbi says what is scripture referring to when it says of the Nazi right and make atonement for him for that he sinned by reason of the soul against which soul did he sin it must refer to the fact that he denied himself wine we can now make this inference from minor to major if this man Nazi right who denied himself wine only is termed sinner how much more so he who denies himself the enjoyment of ever so many things are Eliezer says he is termed holy as it is said he shall be holy he shall let the locks of the hair of his head grow long if this man Nazi right who denied himself wine only is termed holy how much more so he who denies himself it. Enjoyment of ever so many things how will then Samuel explain the verse wherein he is termed holy that refers to the locks growing long and how will our Eliezer explain the statement that he is termed sinner that is because he defiled himself by contact with the dead but did our Eliezer say so did he not say let a man always consider himself Talmud, must it be as if the Holy One dwells within him as it is said the Holy One in the midst of thee and I will not come in fury this is no contradiction the one speaks of him who is able to bear self-affliction and the other of one who is not able rush says he is termed pious as it is said the pious man means his own soul but he that is cruel etc our she's hate said the young scholar who would afflict himself by fasting let a dog devour his meal our Jeremiah B. Abba said there are no public fast in Babylonia except the fast of the ninth of our Jeremiah B. Abba further said in the name of Rush Lakish a scholar may not afflict himself by fasting because he lessens thereby his heavenly work they may eat and drink after it gets dark etc our zeira said in the name of our hand an individual who has undertaken to fast though he may have eaten and drunk the whole of the preceding night yet on the morrow he should recite the special prayer for fast days if however he has continued his fast throughout the following night he may not recite the prayer for fast days on the next day our joseph asked what view does our who not take does he take the view that one cannot undertake a fast for a matter of hours or perhaps one can undertake a fast for hours but if one does so he should not recite the special prayer for fast days i may reply to him it is quite definite our who may hold the opinion that one can undertake a fast for a matter of hours and if one does so he may recite the special prayer for fast days but here the case is different since he did not previously take upon himself to fast marak by chance to Come to Gonzaga and he was asked is fasting for a matter of hours considered a fast or not and he was unable to answer they then asked him are one jars belonging to idolaters prohibited for use or not and he was unable to answer he was then asked in which garments did Moses perform the service in the tabernacle during the seven days of consecration and he was unable to answer he went and inquired in the house of learning and he was told the law is that fasting for a matter of hours is considered a fast and we do recite the special prayer for fast days if one has completed the fast further the law is that one jars belonging to idolaters may be used after twelve months Moses performed the service during the seven days of consecration dressed in a white frock our Kahana taught in a white frock without a border our Hista said Talmud, Mas with reference to what you said that one may fast for a matter of hours this only applies if the man concerned had not tasted Anything until the evening of a said to him this is then a full fast this speaks of a case where the fast was only an afterthought or his da further said a fast over which the sun has not set cannot be deemed a fast an objection was raised against this the men of the Mishmar fast but do not complete the day their fasting is merely in order to afflict themselves in sympathy with the community come and hear our Eliezer Bezotic said I am a descendant of Sinai of the tribe of Benjamin once. The fast of the ninth of fell on the Sabbath and we postponed it until the day after the Sabbath and we fasted but did not complete the fast because it was our festive day there too the fasting was merely in order to afflict themselves in sympathy with the community come and hear our Yohanan once said I will fast until I return home there he said this merely in order to evade the hospitality of the house of the Nasi Samuel said a fast which one does not undertake before sunset on it. Previous day is not deemed to be a fast but what if a man does observe such a fast Rabbi Sheila replied it may be compared to a pair of bellows filled with wind at what time should one undertake such a fast Rab said during the time that one may read the afternoon service and Samuel said in the course of the afternoon Tefila our Joseph said the view of Samuel appears the more reasonable since it is written in the scroll of fast therefore any man who has been subject to a fast previous to this i.e. the incidents of these festive days should build himself by an undertaking does this not refer to an undertaking made during prayer no this only denotes that he is forbidden to break his fast because of his previous undertaking our high and our Simeon be rabbi differ on this question one reads yes or he should bind himself by his undertaking and the other reads yes or he is forbidden i.e. to break his fast the one who reads yes or justifies his view in the way we have just stated but the one who reads Yezer what does this mean it has been taught in the scroll of fast any man who is subject to a fast previous to this incidence of these festive days is forbidden to break his fast how is this to be understood if a man undertook to fast on Mondays and Thursdays throughout the year and any of the festive days enumerated in the scroll of fast happens to fall on those days then if his vow was made previous to our decree his vow overrides our decree but if our decree was made before his vow then our decree overrides his vow our rabbis taught until when may one eat and drink on the night preceding a fast until the rise of dawn this is the opinion of rabbi Arlizer B. Simeon says until cock crow Abbe said this only holds good where a man had not yet finished his meal but if he had finished his meal he may not eat again robber raised an objection against this if one had completed his meal and rose from the table he may eat further there it speaks of the case where he had not yet removed the table some say Rabbah said this holds good only when he has not gone to sleep but if he has gone to sleep he may not eat again Abbe raised an objection against this if one had gone to sleep and then got up he may eat again there it speaks of the case where he was merely dozing what constitutes dozing Arashi replied Talmud, must I be a sleep which is no sleep a wakefulness which is no wakefulness he answers when he is called but cannot recall an argument. When however he is reminded of something he remembers it our Kahana said in the name of Rabbah an individual who has undertaken a fast is forbidden to wear shoes because we fear that perhaps he has undertaken a public fast how shall he declare his vow to be able to wear shoes Rabbah Bishila said he should make the following declaration tomorrow I shall observe before the a private fast the Rabbi said to Arshis hey we have seen rabbis who come to an assembly on a fast day wearing their shoes. Thereupon he became angry and asked them perhaps they even eat Abbe and Rabbah used to come to the assembly wearing shoes without solace Mirmar and Marzitra used to change the right shoe to the left foot and the left to the right the sc
For the bad dream as fire is for toe and upon this are his documented and the fast must be on the same day and are Joseph added even if the day is the Sabbath what amends shall he make for having fasted on the Sabbath he should observe an additional fast mission if these fast days passed and there was no answer to their prayers the Beth did ordain upon the community three further fasts on days preceding these fasts they may eat and drink only whilst it is still day and they may not on. These fast days do work nor bathe nor anoint themselves with oil nor wear shoes nor have marital relations and the baths too are closed if these days pass and there was still no answer to their prayers the Beth did ordain upon the community a further seven fasts making thirteen in all in this respect are the latter more stringent than the former in that on them the alarm is sounded and the shops are closed on Mondays the shutters of the shops are opened a little when it gets dark. But on Thursdays they are permitted the whole day in honor of the Sabbath if these passed and there was still no answer to their prayers and business is restricted as also is building planting betrothal and marriage and men greet one another as people laboring under divine displeasure the Ahidim begin their fasting anew and continue until the end of Nissan if Nissan passes and rain falls this is a sign of divine anger as it is written is it not we harvest today etc. Gamar it is. Reasonable that all the other restrictions should be forbidden because they give pleasure but why work which is a source of pain are history replied in the name of our Jeremiah B. Abba scripture says sanctify yet a fast call a solemn assembly gather the elders this means that the fast day is to be treated like a solemn assembly just as it is not permissible to do work on a solemn assembly it is likewise not permissible to do work on a fast day perhaps just as on the solemn assembly work is. Forbidden from the preceding evening, so too on a fast day work should close on the preceding evening. Arzira replied, Our Jeremiah B. Abba explained the matter to me. The scripture says, Gather the elders, it is to be like a gathering of elders as the elders foregather by day, so too the fast commences on the day, perhaps it commences from noon. Arshisha B. E. D. replied, This is a support for Aruna who said the assembly of the community on a fast day takes place in the morning. How do they spend it? Day Abba replied, From morning to midday they look into the affairs of the city from then onwards. They read for a quarter of the day from the Torah and the prophets, and the rest of the day is spent in praying for mercy as it is said, and they stood up in their place and read in the book of the law of the Lord their God a fourth part of the day, and another fourth part they confessed and prostrate themselves before the Lord their God Talmud. Mas Hayat, perhaps the order of the day is to be reversed this cannot possibly be so seeing that it is written and were assembled unto me everyone that trembled at the words of the God of Israel because of the faithlessness of them of the captivity etc and then follows and at the evening offering I rose from my fasting and spread out my hands unto the Lord Raphraim be Papa said in the name of Arhistah on any fast ordained on account of mourning as for example the ninth of and the mourner it is forbidden to bathe in warm or in cold water. But on any fast ordained merely to prevent indulgence in pleasure as for example a public fast day bathing in warm water is forbidden but permissible in cold water R.E.D.B. Avin said we too have learned and the baths too are closed Abbe said to him if it were forbidden to bathe even in cold water then it should have stated and the rivers are stopped up Arshisha the son of R.E.D. replied this was the difficulty which my father felt he argued let us see the mission already states IT is not. Permissible to bathe, why does it add? And the baths too are closed. Evidently, from this is to be concluded that bathing in warm water is forbidden, but permissible in cold water. Shall we say that the following supports are his All those who have to take the ritual bath immerse in the usual way, both on the ninth of and on the day of atonement. In what water is here meant? Is it in warm water? Is then ritual immersion in warm water permissible, seeing that such water must of necessity be drawn and is therefore unfit for immersion? It must therefore be in cold water, and yet it is only those who have to take the ritual bath who may immerse, but others may not. Said our Hannah B. know this passage has special reference to the hot springs of Tiberias. If this is so, how is the concluding statement to be understood? Our Hannah, the deputy high priest, said, Our house of God merits that a man should for its sake forego an immersion once a year. Now, should you say that bathing in cold? Water is permissible, let him then bathe in cold water. Our papa replied, It speaks of a place where cold water is not available. Come and here when the rabbis declared that it is not permissible to do work on a public fast day, this applies only to the day but not to the night preceding. And when they declared that it is not permissible to wear shoes, this applies only within the city but on the road it is permissible. How should a man act when he sets out on a journey? He puts his shoes on, but when he enters the city, he removes them. And when they declared that it is not permissible to bathe, they meant the whole body, but he may wash his face, hands, or feet. You will find that the same applies to one place under the ban and also to the mourner. Now, does not this last statement imply that they are subject to all the restrictions mentioned previously? This being so, of what water does the bury the speak? Shall we say warm water? Is it then permissible for a mourner to wash his face? Hence or feet in warm water did not Arshis hate say the mourner may not put even his finger into warm water therefore it must speak of cold water no it refers indeed to warm water and as for your difficulty in interpreting and the same applies to one place under the ban and also to the mourner you must take this to refer only to the remaining restrictions and not to bathe in come and hear our Abba the priest said in the name of our Jose the priest it happened that the sons of our Jose be Hannah died and he bathed in cold water throughout the seven days of mourning in his case one bereavement followed clothes on the other for it has been taught where a man suffers one bereavement clothes upon another and his hair weighs heavy upon him he may thin them out with a razor and he may also wash his clothes in water our said with a razor but not with scissors in water but not in natron nor in sand Rabba said a mourner may bathe in cold water all the seven days in the same way as he May partake of meat and wine. An objection was raised against this Talmud. Must I be a girl who has reached adolescence may not make herself unsightly during the days of mourning for her father? This implies that a girl who has not reached adolescence may make herself unsightly, and in which respect may she neglect herself by not bathing? This being so, in what water shall I say in warm? And how can you say that a girl who has not reached adolescence may not neglect herself in this? Respect did not our say a mourner may not put even his finger in warm water. Therefore, it must speak of cold water. No, it speaks of painting the eyelids and dyeing the hair. Shall we say that the following supports Rabbi Arab the priest said in the name of our Jose the priest? It happened that the sons of our Jose be died and he bathed in cold water throughout the seven days of mourning. The answer is in his case one bereavement followed clothes on the other, for it has been taught where. A man suffers one bereavement clothes upon another and his hair weighs heavy upon him he may thin them out with a razor and he may also wash his clothes in water Arista said with a razor but not with scissors in water but not in natron nor in sand nor in aloe some say Rabbi said the mourner may not bathe in cold water all the seven days why this differentiation between bathing in cold water and partaking of meat and wine of these the mourner may partake in order to counteract his fear. Shall we say that support may be adduced from the following passage a girl who has reached adolescence may not make herself unsightly during the days of mourning for her father this implies that one who has not reached adolescence may and in what respect may she neglect herself by not bathing this being so in what water is it in warm water then how can you say that a girl who has reached adolescence may not neglect herself in this respect did not Arista say a mourner may not put even his finger in warm water therefore it must speak of cold water no it speaks of painting the eyelids and dyeing the hair our hisda said this proves that a mourner is forbidden to wash his clothes throughout the seven days of mourning the law is a mourner is forbidden to bathe his whole body either in warm or in cold water all the seven days his face hands and feet he may not wash in warm water but in cold water he may anointing is not permitted at all if however it is to remove the dirt it is permissible where is the prayer for the fast day inserted rab judah brought his son our isaac to the school and he expounded as follows an individual who has taken upon himself a fast should recite the prayer for the fast day and where does he insert it between the benediction for redemption and the benediction for healing our isaac demurred to the saying is it proper that an individual should insert in his prayers a special benediction for himself therefore said our isaac he includes it in the benediction thou hear kenneth to the prayer and so too said Arshis hate in the benediction thou hear kenneth to the prayer an objection was raised against this the only difference between the order of prayer of an individual on a fast day
Both are like the Tana of the Beretha has stated only one difference and has left out others. What other differences has he left out besides this one? And further, does he not explicitly state the only difference, etc.? The Tana speaks only of differences with regard to things forbidden on the fast days and not of differences with regard to prayers. And if you like, I can say that even on the middle three fasts, the 24 benedictions are also not recited, but is this so, has it not? Been taught the only difference between the second three fasts and the last seven is that on the latter the alarm is sounded and the shops are closed. Does this not imply that in all other respects they are alike? And should you reply that here too the Tana stated one difference only and left out others, I would object on the ground that it explicitly states the only difference. Do you assume the expression the only difference, etc.? Talmud, Mas Tana to denote the absolute exclusion of. Any other differences has he not left out mention of the taking out of the ark as for the taking out of the ark this cannot be considered an omission because the Beretha enumerates only things done in private but not things done in public are as she said this may also be deduced from our mission where it is learned in what respect are the latter more stringent than the former and that on them the alarm is sounded and the shops are closed this would imply that in all other respects they are alike and should you reply that here too the mission has stated only one difference and left out others I would object the mission explicitly states in what respect are the latter etc do you assume the expression in what respect are the latter etc literally has he not also left out mention of the taking out of the ark as for the taking out of the ark this cannot be considered an omission because he mentions it in the next chapter if now that you have arrived at this conclusion it Difference in respect of the recital of the 24 benedictions is also no omission since he mentions it also in the next chapter. What is the final decision with regard to the insertion of the special benediction for fast days? Our Samuel B. Sassarda said, and so too our high B. Ashi in the name of Rav. He inserts it between redemption and healing. Our Ashi said in the name of Arjane, the son of Arishmael, in the benediction who hear tennis unto prayer. One very teaches pregnant women and nursing mothers fast on the first fast, but not on the last. Another teaches they fast on the last, but not on the first. And yet another teaches they fast neither on the first nor on the last. Our Ashi said, take it that they fast on the middle set of fast, and in this way all three berithas will be reconciled. In what respect are the latter more stringent than the former? In that on the middle arm is sounded and the shops are closed. How do we sound the alarm? Rav Judah said by the chauffeur Rav Judah. The son of our Samuel B. Shalath in the name of Rab said by the recital of the Anenu the scholars assumed that the authority who said by the Anenu was opposed to the sounding of the alarm by the shofar and that the one who said by the shofar was opposed to the recital of the Anenu but has it not been taught no less than seven fasts are ordained upon the community upon each of which the alarm is sounded eighteen times as a sign to remember this take Jericho now at Jericho the shofar was used. To give the alarm this would be a refutation of him who said by Anenu only hence we must conclude that all are agreed that the sounding of the shofar constitutes the sounding of an alarm and that they differ only with regard to the recital of the Anenu one takes the view that it constitutes the sounding of an alarm and the other that it does not the authority who says that the recital of the Anenu constitutes the sounding of an alarm will hold how much more so does the sounding of it. Shofar, but the authority who says by the shofar would exclude the recital of the Anenu, but has it not been taught in the case of all other visitations that break out in the world? As for example, each locust flies, hornets, gnats, and the invasion by snakes and scorpions, they did not sound the alarm, but they cried aloud, and as crying can only be by mouth, the sounding of the alarm must consequently be by the shofar. This forms a subject of dispute amongst the Tanaim, for it has been learned in the case of these calamities, they sound the alarm even on the Sabbath when a city is surrounded by a ravaging troop or is in danger of inundation by a river or when a ship is foundering on the sea. Our Jose said we may sound the alarm to summon help, but not for intercession. Now, with what is the alarm sounded? Shall we say by the shofar is then the sounding of the shofar on the Sabbath permissible? It must therefore be by the recital of the Anenu, and this is termed sounding the alarm. This proves. It in the time of Arjuna the prince there was distressed Talmud, Mas Tayanath be Talmud, Mas Tayanath be he ordained thirteen fast days and their prayer was not answered he thought of ordaining additional fasts but Rmi said to him did not the sages declare we should not trouble the community unduly said Rabbi the son of Rhi B Ab Rmi in saying this was studying his own interests for thus did Rhi B Ab say in the name of our Yohanan the statement cited by Rmi holds good. Only so far as fasts for rain are concerned but in the case of other forms of visitation the fasts are continued until their prayers are answered from heaven it has been taught to the same effect when they, the sages instituted the order of fast for twice three days and then a further seven days they intended these to be applicable only in the case of fasts for rain but in all other forms of visitation the fasts are to be continued until their prayers are answered from heaven shall we say. That this will be a refutation of our MIRM. RM. I can answer you. The Tanaim are divided on this question, for it has been taught not more than 13 fasts are ordained upon the community because we should not trouble the community unduly. This is the opinion of Rabbi Arsimian B. Gamaliel says this is not the real reason why no additional fasts are ordained, but it is because after these 13 fasts, the time of rainfall has gone. The inhabitants of Nineveh sent to inquire of Rabbi how should we who need rain even in the Tammu cycle act? Are we to consider ourselves individuals and insert the special prayer for rain and who hear canest unto prayer, or shall we consider ourselves a community and insert it in the blessing of the years? He sent word back to them, consider yourselves individuals and insert the prayer and who hear canest unto prayer. An objection was raised against this. Arjuda said, When did this order of fast apply only at such times when the seasons of the year were? Normal and Israel dwelt in their own land, but today all depends upon the years, the countries, and the seasons. He replied, You cite a Beretha in refutation of Rabbi Rabbi is a Tana and has the right to differ from a Beretha. What is the final decision with regard to this matter? Our Naman said, The blessing is inserted in the blessing of the years. Our Shiz said, In who here canest unto prayer, the law is it is inserted in who here canest unto prayer. On Mondays, the shutters of the shops are opened a little when it gets dark, but on Thursdays, they are permitted the whole day in honor of the Sabbath. The question was raised, How did the Mishnah teach? Was it that on Mondays, the shutters are opened a little when it gets dark, and on Thursdays, they are opened a little during the whole day in honor of the Sabbath, or perhaps that on Mondays, they are open a little, and on Thursdays, they are open wide for the whole day. Come and here it has been taught on Mondays, they are opened. Slightly till the evening and on Thursdays they remain wide open the whole day in honor of the Sabbath should there be two doors then one is kept open and the other remains closed should there be a stand in front of the door he may open the door in the usual way without any compunction if these pass without their prayer being answered then business dealings are restricted as well as building and planting it has been taught by building is to be understood building for joyous purposes and by planting planting for joyous purposes what is building for joyous purposes building a house for the marriage feast of one's own son what is planting for joyous purposes when one erects a royal banqueting hall and greeting our rabbis taught scholars do not greet one another at all the greetings of the ignorant are reciprocated in an undertone in a solemn manner people are seated covered in mourner's fashion and like those placed under the ban and like men laboring under divine displeasure until mercy is shown to them from heaven, our Eliezer said, A prominent man should not fall upon his face unless he is confident that he will be answered like Joshua as it is said, and the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore now art thou fallen upon thy face. Our Eliezer further said, A prominent man should not put on sackcloth unless he is confident that he will be answered like Jehoram the son of Ahab as it is said, and it came to pass when the king heard the words of the woman that he rent his clothes. Now he was passing by upon the wall, and the people looked, and behold, he had sackcloth within upon his flesh, etc. Our Eliezer further said, Not everyone is answered through rending his garments, nor is everyone answered through falling on his face. Moses and Aaron were answered through falling on the face. Joshua and Caleb through rending their garments, Moses and Aaron through falling on the face, for it is written, and Moses and Aaron fell on their faces, Joshua and Caleb through. Renting their garments for it is written and Joshua the son of number and Caleb rent their clothes R-Z-E-I-R-A and some say our Samuel be Namani demur to this had it been written in the ver
Ashes are placed on the ark on the head of the Nisai and on the head of the Beth. Then everyone else puts ashes on his own head. The elder among them addresses them with words of admonition to repentance. Thus our brethren scripture does not say of the people of Nineveh and God saw their sackcloth and their fasting, but in God saw their works that they turned from their evil way and in the prophets it is said and rend your heart and not your garments when they stand up to pray they place as reader before the ark an old man conversant with the prayers who has children and whose house is empty of food so that his heart is concentrated on his prayer he recites before them twenty four benedict ions of eighteen recited daily to which he adds six as follows sicrono shofaroth and these psalms in my distress i called unto the lord i will lift up my eyes unto the mountains etc out of the depths have i called the o lord a prayer of the afflicted when he fainteth our judah says he need not recite the sicrono and shofaroth but instead he should recite the following scriptural passages if there be in the land famine if there be pestilence the word of the lord that came to jeremiah concerning the droughts and he ends each of the additional six sections with its appropriate concluding benediction the first he concludes with he who answered abraham on empty mariah he shall answer you and hearken this day to the voice of your cry blessed art thou o lord who redeemest israel the second he concludes with he who answered our fathers at the Red Sea he shall answer you and hearken the stage of the voice of your cry blessed art thou o Lord who remembers all forgotten things the third he concludes with he who answered Joshua in Gilgal he shall answer you and hearken the stage of the voice of your cry blessed art thou o Lord who hears the trumpet blast the fourth he concludes with he who answered Samuel in Mizpah he shall answer you and hearken the stage of the voice of your cry blessed art thou o Lord who hearkenest to cries the fifth he concludes with he who answered Elijah on empty Carmel he shall answer you and hearken the stage of the voice of your cry blessed art thou o Lord who hearkenest unto prayer the sixth he concludes with he who answered Jonah in the belly of the fish he shall answer you and hearken the stage of the voice of your cry blessed art thou o Lord who answerest in time of trouble the seventh he concludes with he who answered David and Solomon his son in Jerusalem, he shall answer you and hearken the stage of the voice of your cry, blessed art thou, O Lord, who hast mercy upon the land. It happened, Talmud, Mos Tayanat be in the days of our Halafah and our Hanan betrayed I, and that a man stepped before the ark and completed the entire benediction, and they did not respond. Amen. The synagogue attendant called out, sound to Tekia, priest, sound to Tekia, and the reader exclaimed, He who answered Abraham, our father, on empty Mariah, he shall answer you. And hearken the stage of the voice of your cry, the synagogue attendant continued, sound to Tekia, our children of Aaron, sound to Tekia, and the reader exclaimed, He who answered our fathers at the Red Sea, he shall answer you and hearken the stage of the voice of your cry. And when the matter came up before the wise, they declared, This was our order of procedure only at the eastern gates and on the temple mount on the first three rain fasts, the men of the Mishmar fast, but do not complete their fast. And the men of the Bethab do not fast at all on the second three rain fast. The men of the Mishmar fast and complete their fast. And the men of the Bethab fast, but do not complete their fast on the last seven. Both fast and complete their fast. This is the opinion of our Joshua the sages. However, say on the first three fast, neither fast at all on the second three. The men of the Mishmar fast and do not complete their fast. But the men of the Bethab do not fast at all on the last seven. The men of the Mishmar fast and complete their fast. And the men of the Bethab fast, but do not complete their fast. The men of the Mishmar are permitted to drink wine in the evenings, but not during the day. But the men of the Bethab may not drink wine either on the day or on the preceding evening. Both the men of the Mishmar and the men of the Maimati may not cut their hair nor wash their clothes, but on the Thursday they may in honor of the Sabbath the restriction against mourning on the days enumerated in. The scroll of fast applies equally to the preceding day but not to the day following our Jose says it is forbidden to mourn both on the preceding day and the day following as for fasting it is permitted on the preceding day and on the day following our Jose says it is forbidden on the preceding day but permitted on the day following we do not ordain upon the community of fast to commence on a Thursday in order not to cause a rise in the market prices hence the first three fasts are held in this order Monday Thursday and Monday the second three Thursday Monday and Thursday our Jose says just as the first three fasts should not commence on a Thursday so too neither the second three nor the last seven we do not ordain upon the community of fast on new moon on Hanukkah or on Purim but if they had already begun a series of fasts and one of these festive days intervened they do not interrupt their fast this is the opinion of Rabbi Gamaliel our Meir said even though our Gamaliel is of the opinion that the fast should not be interrupted, he yet agrees that they should not complete their fast, and the same applies to the ninth of which should it fall on a Friday tomorrow. What is the order of services for fast days? The ark is taken out, etc. Does all this apply to the first six fasts? If so, is there not a contradiction raised against this? For it has been taught on the first three, and also on the second three fasts, they enter the synagogue and pray there in the same way as they pray all the year round. But on the last seven, the ark is taken to the open space of the city, and ashes are placed on the ark, and also upon the head of the Abethin, and everyone else puts ashes upon his own head. Our Nathan says they take wood ashes. Our Papa replied, Our mission also refers to the last seven fasts, and on the head of the Nasi, and afterwards the mission states everyone else puts ashes upon his own head. But is it so? Has it not been taught? Rabbi says, Where it is a case of doing. Honor we begin at the most distinguished, but where it is a case of centering, we begin at the least important, as it is said, and Moses said unto Aaron and unto Eliezer and unto Ithamar, but where it is a case of centering, we begin at the least important, for a master said first the serpent was cursed, and afterwards Eve, and only then Adam here in our mission, it is also a case of doing honor, because by this act the people convey to them the thought you are worthy to entreat for mercy on behalf of us all, everyone else puts ashes on his own head, our Adiset, seeing that everyone else puts the ashes on his own head, let also the Nasi and the Abeth in themselves take ashes and place them on their own heads, why should someone else take ashes and put them on their head, our Abba of Caesarea replied to humiliate oneself is not the same as being humiliated by others, Talmud, Mos Tainate, and where on the head does he put the ashes, our Isaac said on the place of the phylacteries as it is said to appoint unto them that morning Zion to give unto them a garland for ashes, Nemonic open space, arc sackcloth, wood ashes, dust, cemetery, Mariah, why do they go out to the open space of the city, our high B. Abba said, in order to express their by the idea we have prayed in private, but we have not been answered, we will therefore humiliate ourselves in public, Resh Lakish said, we have exiled ourselves from the house of God, may our exile atone for us, what is the difference between the two explanations, the difference is when they move from one synagogue to another, and why do they take out the ark to the open space of the city, our Joshua B. Levi said, in order to express their by the idea we had a vessel which we kept hidden, and now because of our sins it has been rendered common, and why do they clothe themselves in sackcloth, our high B. Abba said, in order to express their by the idea we consider ourselves animals before God, and why do they place wood ashes upon the ark, our Judah Bipas he said as if to say I will be with him in trouble Resh Lakish said as if to say in all their afflictions he was afflicted Arzara said when I first saw the rabbis placing with ashes on the ark my whole body shook and why does everyone else put ashes on his head with regard to this there is a difference of opinion between our Levi Behama and our Hannah one says to signify thereby we are merely like ashes before thee and the other says that God may remember for our sake the ashes of Isaac what is the difference between them the difference is with regard to the use of ordinary dust why do they go to the cemetery with regard to this there is a difference of opinion between our Levi Behama and our Hannah one says to signify thereby we are as the dead before thee and the other says in order that the dead should intercede for mercy on our behalf what is the difference between them the difference is with regard to going to the cemetery of Gentiles what is the meaning of Mount Moriah with regard to this there is a difference of opinion between our Levi Behama and our Hannah one says because from this mountain instruction went forth unto Israel and the other says because it is a mountain whence fear came upon the heathens the elder among them addresses them with words of admonition our rabbis have taught if there is an elder present he addresses them if not then a scholar addresses them and if there is no scholar present then a distinguished looking man addresses them does the term
The waters of the world his immersion is of no avail unto him but if he throws it away from his hand and as soon as he immerses himself in forty seahs of water immediately his immersion becomes effective as it is said but whoso confieseth and forsake them shall obtain mercy and it is further said let us lift up our heart with our hands unto God in the heavens when they stand up to pray they place before the ark as reader an old man etc our rabbis have taught when they stand up to pray. Although there may be present an elder and a scholar they place before the ark as reader only a man conversant with the prayers who is considered conversant with prayers are Judah says one having a large family and has no means of support and who draws his subsistence from the produce of the field and whose house is empty whose youth was unblemished who is meek and is acceptable to the people who is skilled in chanting who has a pleasant voice and possesses a thorough knowledge of the Torah. The prophets and the hagiographer of the Midrash Halasha and Gedoth and of all the benedictions thereupon the rabbis gazed on our Isaac B. M. I. Talmud, Mos B. is not one having a large family with no means of support the same as one whose house is empty. Our historic reply the latter refers to a man whose house is free from sin whose youth was unblemished. Abbe said this is one against whom no evil reputation had gone forth and his youth my heritage is become unto to me as a lion in it. Forest she hath uttered her voice against me therefore have I hated her what is the meaning of she hath uttered her voice against me Marzitra B. Tobia said in the name of Rab some say Arhamma said in the name of our Eliezer this refers to an unfit person who steps down before the ark to act as reader and he recites before them twenty four benedictines of eighteen recited daily to which he adds six more are there only six are they not actually seven as we have learned the seventh benediction. He concludes with blessed be he who has mercy upon the earth Arnam and B. Isaac replied do you know which is the seventh it is the seventh of the longer benedictions as it has been taught the benediction who redeemest Israel is prolonged and at its conclusion the reader adds he who answered Abraham on empty Moriah he shall answer you and hearken this day unto the voice of your cry blessed art thou who redeemest Israel and the congregation respond amen the synagogue attendant calls out unto then blow a teruah ye children of Aaron blow a teruah and the reader resumes with he who answered our fathers at the Red Sea he shall answer you and hearken this day to the cry of your voice blessed art thou O Lord who rememberest forgotten things and the congregation responds amen the synagogue attendant calls out sound a teruah ye children of Aaron sound a teruah and likewise he does with the other benedictions and one he calls out sound a tekiah and another sound a teruah the order of service in which the congregation responds amen holds good for the country generally but not for the temple because the response amen is not made use of in the temple and whence can it be this that the response amen was not made use of in the temple for it is said stand up and bless the Lord your God from everlasting to everlasting and, and let them say blessed be thy glorious name that is exalted above all blessing and praise you might have thought that there shall be only one form of Praise after all benedictions therefore the text adds exalted above all blessing and praise that is to say give him praise after every blessing what them was said in the temple blessed be the Lord God the God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting blessed art thou who redeemest Israel and the congregation respond blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever the synagogue attendant calls out unto them blow a tekiah, o priests sons of Aaron blow a tekiah, and the reader resumes with he who answered Abraham on empty Moriah he will answer you and hearken to the voice of your cry blessed art thou o Lord God of Israel who remembers forgotten things and the congregation respond blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever the synagogue attendant calls out sound to Teruah, o priests children of Aaron sound to etc and likewise he does with the other benedictions at one he calls out blow a tekiah, and at another sound to Teruah, until he completes them all are he to made this order of procedure the custom of Sephoris and Arhanan Yabitra and made it the custom of Sikhan when however the matter came to the notice of the sages they declared that this custom was observed only at the eastern gates and on the temple mount some report the passage just cited in the form taught in the following that the reader recites before them 24 benedictions the 18 recited daily to which he adds 6 more where are those 6 included between the benedictions for redemption and healing the sick the latter benediction being prolonged and the congregation respond amen after every benediction this was the custom in the country generally but in the temple they said blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting blessed art thou O Lord who redeemest Israel and there was no response amen after it and why all this long response because it was not customary to respond amen in the temple and whence can it be a that they did not respond amen in the temple for it is said stand up and bless the Lord your God from everlasting to everlasting and let them say blessed be thy glorious name that is exalted above all blessing and praise that is to say give him praise after every benediction our rabbis have taught when concluding the first benediction he says blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting blessed art thou who redeemest Israel and the congregation respond blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever the synagogue attendant calls out sound to priest sound to and the reader then resumes he who answered Abraham on empty Moriah he will answer you and hearken this day to the voice of your cry and they blow a and sound to and blow a again when concluding the second benediction he says blessed be the Lord God the God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting blessed art thou who remembers forgotten things and the congregation respond blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever the synagogue attendant then calls out sound to teruah children of Aaron sound to and the reader resumes he who answered our fathers at the Red Sea he will answer you and hearken this day to the voice of your cry they then sound to and blow a tekiah and sound to again and likewise he does after every benediction at one he calls out blow a tekiah and at another sound to until all the benedictions are concluded our have made this order of procedure the custom of Sephoris and Arhanan Yabitra and made it the custom of Sikhan when however the matter was brought to the notice of the sages they declared that this custom was observed only at the eastern gate and on the temple mount Arjuda says he need not recite the Zikranoth and Shoferoth etc said Arad of Java what may be Arjuda's reason because Zikranoth and Shoferoth are recited only on New Year Talmud. Most high and on the day of atonement of the jubilee year and in the time of war the first he concludes with he who answered Abraham etc. A tanna taught some reverse the order of the words and attribute crying to Elijah and praying to Samuel true of Samuel scripture uses the words praying and crying but of Elijah scripture uses only the word praying but never crying when Elijah says hear me O Lord hear me that is an expression of crying the sixth he concludes with he who answered Jonah etc. The seventh he concludes with he who answered David etc. Let us see did not Jonah live after David and Solomon why then is he placed first because it was desired to conclude the prayers with blessed art thou O Lord who hast mercy upon the earth A tanna taught it was reported in the name of Simicos that the prayers were concluded with blessed art thou who humblest the proud on the first three rain fast the men of the mission fast but do not complete their fast etc. Our rabbis. Have taught why have the sages ruled that the men of the Mishmar are permitted to drink wine by night and not by day lest the work weigh too heavily on the men of the Bethab and then they will be called upon to help them why have the sages ruled that the men of the Bethab are forbidden to drink both by day and by night because they are continuously at work in the temple hence the sages have declared that any priest who can identify his Mishmar and his particular Bethab and who also knows definitely that the members of his Bethab were participating in the service of the temple is forbidden to drink wine on the whole of that day if however he can identify only his Mishmar but not his particular Bethab and yet he knows definitely that the members of his Bethab were participating in the service of the temple he is forbidden to drink wine the whole of that week if he cannot identify his Mishmar nor his particular Bethab but he knows definitely that the members of his Bethab we're participating in the service of the temple he is forbidden to drink wine all the year round rabbi says I declare priests should not at any time drink wine but what can I do seeing that his misfortune turned out to be an advantage to him Abbe said according to whose opinion do priests drink wine according to that of rabbi both the men of the Mishmar and the men of the Maya may not cut their hair nor wash their clothes but on a Thursday they may out of respect for the Sabbath what is the reason Rabbi Barhana said in the name of our Yohanan in order that they should not enter on their week of duty in an unkempt state our rabbis have taught a king cuts his hair every day a high priest on the eve of every Sabbath all ordinary priest once in thirty
Their locks it might be as you suggest but since scripture has written nor suffer their locks to grow long this implies they may grow their hair but they may not suffer their locks to grow long if that is so this restriction should be valid even at the present time this restriction is on the same lines as that of the drinking of wine just as the restriction of drinking wine applied only to the time when they might enter the temple to do service so too with regard to the restriction of Letting the locks grow long but has it not been taught rabbi says I declare that a priest should not at any time drink wine but what can I do seeing that his misfortune turned out to be an advantage to him and on this Abbe commented at the present time according to whom do priests drink wine according to Rabbi Talmud, Mas Tiyanat from this may be inferred that the rabbis forbid priests to drink wine while perhaps the temple may speedily be rebuilt and the need will arise for priests to do service therein and there will be none available and so here too in the case of letting the hair grow long the temple may speedily be rebuilt and the need will arise for priests fit for service and there will be none available this difficulty cannot arise here in this latter case since it is always possible for a priest to cut his hair and then enter the temple if that is so then priests who are intoxicated could first sleep a little and then enter the temple in accordance with the statement of Rami B. Abba who said a mile walk or a little sleep drives away the effects of drink has it not been stated in connection with this statement this only holds good where a man has drunk a quarter of a log but where he has drunk more than a quarter of a log walking renders him all the more tired and sleep all the more drunk are as she replied the rabbis have decreed against those who are drunk because they profane thereby the service but against those who perform the service with their hair long they did not decree because they do not thereby profane the service an objection was raised against this the following priests incur the penalty of death those who are intoxicated with wine and those whose hair has grown long with regard to those who are intoxicated with wine it is expressly stated drink no wine nor strong drink but once do we this that this also applies to those who grow their hair long for it is written neither shall they shave their heads nor suffer their locks to grow long and the next verse states neither shall any priest drink wine when they enter into the inner court thus those who grow their hair long are likened to those who are drunk with wine just as those who are drunk with wine incur the penalty of death so too those who grow their locks long now can we not carry the comparison even further and say that just as those who are drunk with wine profane the service so too should those who grow their hair long profane the service no the two are likened only with regard to the penalty of death but not with regard to the rendering of the service profane Rabban asked Arashi who taught it before Ezekiel's time he replied and according to your reasoning how will you explain the statement of Arhista who said the rule forbidding an uncircumcised priest to do service we have learned not from the law of Moses but from the prophets where it is written no alien uncircumcised in heart and uncircumcised in flesh shall enter my Sanctuary, but who stated it, it must therefore be assumed that it was a tradition, and then Ezekiel came and gave it a scriptural basis here too of long hair profaning the service. There was a tradition, and then Ezekiel came and gave it a scriptural basis. The tradition was with regard to the death penalty only, but not with regard to the profaning of the service. The restriction against mourning on the days enumerated in the scroll of fast applies to the preceding day, but not to the day. Following our rabbis have taught these are the days on which fasting is not permissible, and on some of the morning also is forbidden from the new moon of Nisan until the eighth of the month. Morning is not permissible because the daily offering was established from the eighth day of the same month until the end of the festival of Passover. Morning is not permissible since the date of the observance of the feast of weeks was then definitely fixed. The master said from the new moon of Nisan. Until the eighth of the month morning is not permissible because the daily offering was established. Why does it stay from the new moon? Let it stay from the second of Nisan, and as new moon itself is a festive day, morning is in any case forbidden. Thereon, Rabbi replied, This is necessary in order to extend the restriction to the preceding day, but should not the restriction in any case apply to it, seeing that it is the day before new moon? New moon is a biblical ordinance, and a biblical ordinance needs no additional strengthening for it has been taught. Morning is forbidden before and after the days enumerated in the Megillah Tyanath as for Sabbaths and festivals. Morning is forbidden on the day before their incidents, but not after their incidents. Why this differentiation between the two? The latter are biblical ordinances and need no additional strengthening, but the former are ordinances of the Sofram and ordinances of the Sofram need additional strengthening, the master said. From the eighth of the same month until the end of the festival, Passover morning is not permissible since the date of the observance of the Feast of Weeks was then definitely fixed. Why does it stay until the end of the festival? Let it stay until the festival and the festival itself being a holiday will ipso facto be a forbidden period for morning. Our Papa replied, The answer is as Rab who said this was necessary Talmud, Mas Tayanath, in order to extend the restriction to the preceding day. So here also it was necessary in order to extend the restriction to the following day. With whose view will disagree? Is it with that of our Jose who declared that the restriction applies equally to the day before and the day after it? If so, with regard to the 29th of Darwani, you base your restriction on the ground that it is the day before the daily offering was established, deduce it rather from the fact that it is the day after the 28th concerning which it has been taught. On the 28th of the month, the Dar the good news reached the Jews that they were no longer to be kept back from the study of the Torah, for once it was decreed that the Jews should not occupy themselves with the study of the Torah nor circumcise their children, and that they should desecrate the Sabbath. What did Judah Bishamu and his colleagues do? They went and took counsel with a Roman matron with whom all the prominent Romans were wont to associate. She advised them arise and raisin. Alarm by night, they went and raised the alarm by night. Thus, O ye heavens, are we not your brethren? Are we not the children of one father? Are we not the children of one mother? Wherein are we different from every other nation and tongue that ye make harsh decrees against us? Thereupon the decrees were annulled, and that day was declared a festive day. Abbe replied, It was necessary to state the restriction in this way in order to cover the case of a full month where Adar has thirty days are ashy. Said the same would be the case even when the month of Adar is deficient because on a day following on a festive day fasting alone is forbidden but morning is permissible but as for this day the 29th Adar seeing that it is placed between two festive days it was considered as if it were a festive day itself and therefore morning too was forbidden thereon the master said from the 8th day of the month until the end of the festival morning is forbidden since then the date of the observance of the feast of weeks was definitely fixed why does he say from the 8th of the same month let him say from the 9th of the same month and the 8th day would ipso facto be forbidden because it is the day on which the daily offering was established the reason why it is stated the 8th day is that should it ever come to pass that the seven festive days be abolished even then on the 8th day it would still be forbidden to mourn because it is the first day on which the date of the Feast of Weeks was definitely fixed now that you have arrived at this conclusion the same will apply also to the 29th Adar because should it ever come to pass that the 28th Adar be abolished as a festive day even then the 29th would be forbidden seeing that it is the day before the daily offering was established it has been taught our high BAC I said in the name of Rab the Halacha is in accordance with the view of our Jose Samuel said the Halacha is in accordance with the view of our Meir but did Samuel actually say so has it not been taught our Simeon B. Gamaliel said why does the text in the scroll of fast repeat the word behind on them twice this is to teach you that the restriction applies to these days but not to the days immediately preceding or following the days enumerated in the scroll of fast on which Samuel's comment was that the Halacha is in accordance with the view of our Simeon B. Gamaliel at first he thought that as there was no other Authority who took a lenient view as Armeyer did he decided that the Halacha was according to Armeyer but when he heard that Rabbi Simeon took an even more lenient view he decided that the Halacha was according to our Simeon B. Gamaliel and so too said Bali in the name of our high B. Abba in the name of our Yohanan the Halacha is according to our Jose thereupon our high said to Bali I will explain to you that when our Yohanan said that the Halacha was in accordance with our Jose he meant only with regard to the prohibition of fasting but did our Yohanan actually say so did not our Yohanan say that the Halacha is in accordance with the anonymous opinion of a mission and it has been learned although the Rabbi said that the Megillah of Esther could be read earlier but not later yet Talmud must have be morning and fasting are permitted now to what does this apply shall we say that it applies to those who should read the Megillah on the 15th Adar and they read it on the 14th is
replied if the festive character of the day had been once abolished is it then feasible that fasting should be forbidden thereon because it is the day before Nicanor's day what is Nicanor's day and what is Trajan's day it has been taught Nicanor was one of the Greek generals every day he waved his hand against Judah and Jerusalem and exclaimed when shall it fall into my hands that I may trample upon it but when the Hasmonean rulers proved victorious and triumphed over him they cut off his thumbs and his great toes and suspended them from the gates of Jerusalem as if to say of the mouth that spake arrogantly of the hands that were waved against Jerusalem may vengeance be exacted what is Trajan's day it was said when Trajan was about to execute Lilianus and his brother Papus in Laodicea Lydia he said to them if you are of the people of Hanani Missal and Ezra let your God come and deliver you from my hands in the same way as he delivered Hanani Missal and Ezra from the hands of Nebuchadnezzar and to this they replied Hanani Missal and Ezra were perfectly righteous men and they merited that a miracle should be wrought for them and Nebuchadnezzar also was a king worthy for a miracle to be wrought through him but as for you you are a common and wicked man and are not worthy that a miracle be wrought through you and as for us we have deserved of the omnipresent that we should die and if you will not kill us the omnipresent has many other agents of death. The omnipresent has in his world many bears and lions who can attack us and kill us. The only reason why the Holy One blessed be he has handed us over into your hand is that at some future time he may exact punishment of you for our blood. Despite this he killed them. It is reported that hardly had they moved from there when two officials arrived from Rome and split his skull with clubs. We do not ordain upon the community fast to commence on a Thursday etc. We do not ordain upon the community a fast on new moon etc. What constitutes a beginning? Araha said three fasts. Araha said one. Rab Judah said in the name of Rab the view that one should not complete the fast is in accordance with our mayor who reported it in the name of our Simeon B. Gamaliel. But the sages say he should complete the fast. Marzitra expounded in the name of our who not the Halachah is one should complete the fast. C-H-A-P-T-E-R-I-I -I mission the order of public fast aforementioned is observed only in connection with it. Withholding of the first rain, but if the crops have undergone an unusual change, the alarm is sounded, and once the same too is done, if forty days elapse between the first and the second rainfall, because it is then a plague due to drought, if rain falls for crops, but not for the trees, for the trees, but not for crops, for both of these, but not for cisterns, ditches, and caves, the alarm is sounded at once, and so too, if no rain falls upon a particular city, as it is written, and I caused it to rain upon one city, and caused it not to rain upon another city, one piece was rained upon, etc. Talmud, Mos Tiana, in such a case, that city fast and sounds the alarm, but those in the places around it fast, but do not sound the alarm. Our Akiba says they sound the alarm, but do not fast, and so too, if a plague rages in a city or its buildings collapse, then that city fast and sounds the alarm, but the people in the places around it fast, but do not sound the alarm. Our Akiba says they sound the alarm. But do not fast what constitutes a plague if in a city that can supply 500 foot soldiers three deaths take place on three consecutive days this constitutes a plague less than this is no plague the alarm is sounded everywhere on account of the following visitations blast mildew locusts cricket wild beasts and the sword as they are all plagues likely to spread it happened that elders went down from Jerusalem to their own cities and ordered to fast because there was observed in Ascalon. Blast which affected as much rain as would fill an oven with loaves made thereof they also ordained to fast because wolves devoured two children on the other side of the Jordan our Jose said not because they devoured the children but merely because they were seen the alarm is sounded on the Sabbath on account of the following mishaps if a city is besieged by hostile troops or inundated by the river or if a ship is foundering on the sea our Jose says the alarm is sounded for help but not. For a call to prayer, Simeon the Temanite says the alarm is sounded on account of plague, but the sages did not agree with him. The alarm is sounded on account of any visitation that comes upon the community, except on account of an overabundance of rain. It happened that the people said to H O N I, the circle drove, pray for rain to fall. He replied, Go and bring in the ovens on which you have roasted the paschal offering, so that they do not dissolve. He prayed, and no rain fell. What did he do? He drew a circle and stood within it and exclaimed, Master of the universe, thy children have turned to me because they believe me to be as a member of thy household. I swear by thy great name that I will not move from here until thou hast mercy upon thy children. Rain then began to drip, and thereupon he exclaimed, It is not for this that I have prayed, but for rain to fill cisterns, stitches, and caves. The rain then began to come down with great force, and thereupon he exclaimed, It is not for this that I. I prayed but for rain of benevolence blessing and bounty rain then fell in the normal way until the Israelites in Jerusalem were compelled to go up for shelter to the temple mount because of the rain they came and said to him in the same way as you have prayed for the rain to fall pray now for the rain to cease he replied go and see if the stone of clements has been washed away thereupon Simeon Bishad sent to him this message were it not that your H O N I I would have placed you under the ban but what can I do unto you who important God and he accedes to your request as a son that importance his father and he accedes to his request of you scripture says let thy father and thy mother be glad and let her that for thee rejoice if whilst they are fasting rain falls if it is before sunrise they do not complete the fast if after sunrise they do complete the fast our Eliezer says if before noon they do not complete the fast after noon they do complete it it happened that they Rabbis ordained to fast in Lydia and rain fell before noon thereupon Artarphon said to them go eat and drink and observe the day as a holiday they went and ate and drank and observed the day as a holiday and at evening time they came and recited the great hallow Gemara the order of public fast aforementioned is observed only in connection with the withholding of the first rain a contradiction was raised against this mission if rain is withheld at the time of the first and second rain falls. Prayers are offered if at the third rainfall fasts are observed Rab Judah replied the mission means this the order of fast aforementioned is observed only when the time for the first second and third fructification rainfalls has passed and no rain fell but if rain fell at the time for the first fructification rainfall and they sowed but nothing sprouted forth or if the plants did sprout forth but they had undergone an unusual change the alarm is sounded at once Arnaman said only when they had undergone an unusual change but not if they merely withered away is not the self-evident we clearly learned have undergone a change our nominal statement is needed to cover the case of seeds that have already shot up into stocks you might have thought that this is a sign of recovery he therefore informs us that it is not the same too is done if 40 days elapsed between the first and the second rainfalls and no rain fell etc what is the nature of the plague of drought rab judah said in the name of rab a plague which leads to scarcity our nominal said when grain has to be transported by river talmud must high from one city to another it is drought but when it has to be brought over land from one province to another it is famine our hannah said if sea of grain costs one cell and is obtainable it is drought but if four seah cost a cell but are not easily obtainable then it is a famine our yohanan added this holds good only when money is cheap and food dear but if Money is dear and food cheap, then the alarm is sounded at once for Aryohan and said, I remember well the time when four SEAHS cost one cell, and yet there were many in Tiberias swollen from hunger because there was not a coin to be had if rain falls for crops, but not for the trees. It is, of course, possible for rainfall to be beneficial for crops and not for the trees when the rain falls gently and not heavily. Similarly, it can be beneficial for trees and not for crops when it falls heavily and not gently. Similarly, it can be beneficial for both of them and yet not for cisterns, ditches, and caves if it falls heavily and gently, but yet not in great enough volume. But is it possible for rain to fall for cisterns, ditches, and caves and yet not be beneficial for both of these crops and trees as has been taught in the very though when the rain is torrential? Our rabbis have taught the alarm for rain for the trees is sounded during the middle of the Passover season and for the cisterns. Ditches and caves even during the middle of the tabernacle season and at any time should there be no water to drink the alarm is sounded at once what is meant by at once on the following Monday Thursday and Monday the alarm is sounded for all the aforementioned only in the particular province affected in the case of croup the alarm is sounded only when deaths result from it but if no deaths result the alarm is not sounded in the case of locusts the alarm is sounded no matter how small in number our Simeon B. Eliezer says the alarm is sounded also in the case of gras
though is not well baked and unable to what may be compared to years when the rains are abundant to a servant to whom his master gave his years food allowance in one lot so that the waste of the mill in grinding a core is no more than the waste in grinding a calf and likewise the waste in kneading a core is no more than in kneading a calf to what may be compared to years when the rains are scanty to a servant to whom his master gave his years food allowance little by little so that the waste in grinding a calf is no less than in grinding a core and likewise the waste in kneading a calf is no less than in kneading a core another explanation when the rains are plentiful they may be compared to a man kneading clay if he has a plentiful supply of water then the clay is well kneaded without all the water being used up but if the supply is scanty the water will give out and the clay is not well kneaded our rabbis have taught once it happened when all Israel came up on pilgrimage to Jerusalem that there was no water available for drinking thereupon Nachman Begirian approached a certain heathen lord and said to him loan me twelve wells of water for the pilgrims and I will repay you twelve wells of water and if I do not I will give you instead twelve talents of silver and he fixed a time limit for repayment when the time came for repayment and no rain had yet fallen the lord sent a message to him in the morning return to me either the water or the money that you owe. Me Nachman replied I have still time the whole day is mine at midday he again sent to him a message return to me either the water or the money that you owe me Nachman replied I still have time today in the afternoon he again sent to him a message return to me either the water or the money that you owe me Nachman replied I still have time today thereupon the lord sneeringly said to him seeing that no rain has fallen throughout the whole year Talmud, Mas Tiantha will it then rain now. Thereupon he repaired in a happy mood to the baths. Meanwhile, whilst the Lord had gone gleefully to the baths, Nachman entered the temple depressed. He wrapped himself in his cloak and stood up to pray. He said, Master of the universe, it is revealed and known before thee that I have not done this for my honor nor for the honor of my father's house, but for thine honor have I done this in order that water be available for the pilgrims. Immediately the sky became covered with clouds and rain fell. Until the twelve wells were filled with water and there was much over as the Lord came out of the baths, Nachman Begirian came out from the temple and the two met and Nachman said to the Lord, Give me the money for the extra water that you have received. The latter replied, I know that the Holy One blessed be he disturbed the world, but for your sake yet my claim against you for the money still holds good for the sun had already set and consequently the rain fell in my possession, Nachman thereupon. Again entered the temple and wrapped himself in his cloak and stood up to pray and said, Master of the universe, make it known that thou hast beloved ones in thy world. Immediately the clouds dispersed and the sun broke through. Thereupon the Lord said to him, Had not the sun broken through, I would still have had a claim against you, entitling me to exact my money from you. It has been taught his name was not Nachman but Boni, and he was called Nachman because the sun had broken through Nicaragua. His behalf the rabbis have taught for the sake of three the sun broke through Moses, Joshua, and Nachman Begirian. Now of Nachman we know from the above tradition of Joshua too, we know from scripture where it is written, and the sun stood still and the moon stayed, etc. But of Moses whence do we know this? Our Eliezer said, We deduce it from an inference from the analogous use of the word Ahel. Here it is written, I will begin Ahel to put the dread of the and elsewhere it is written, I will begin Ahel. To magnify the R. Samuel B. Naman, he said from an analogous use of the word Tate, here it is written, I will begin to put Tate the dread of thee, and elsewhere it is written in the day when the Lord delivered Tate up the Amorites, etc. Our Yohanan said it can be derived from the verse itself, who when they hear the report of thee shall tremble and be in anguish because of thee, when did they tremble and were in anguish before Moses when the sun broke through for Moses, and so too if no rain falls. Upon a particular city, etc. Rab Judah said in the name of Rab, both cities cited in the verse are under divine displeasure, Jerusalem is among them as one unclean Rab Judah said in the name of Rab, the verse implies blessing as an unclean menstruous woman becomes permissible to her husband, so too will Jerusalem be reinstated, she has become as a widow, Rab Judah said the verse implies blessing as a widow, not a real widow, but a woman whose husband has gone to a country beyond the sea fully. Intending to return to her, therefore, have I also made you contemptible and base before all the people. Rab Judah said, The verse implies blessing of you. No overseers of rivers nor officers shall be appointed for the Lord will smite Israel as a reed is shaken in the water. Rab Judah said, In the name of Rab, the verse implies blessing for our Samuel B. Namani said, In the name of our Yohanan, what is the meaning of the verse? Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are importunate. Better is the curse which Ahijah the Shilonite pronounced on Israel than the blessings with which Balaam the wicked blessed them. Ahijah the Shilonite cursed them by comparing them with the reed he said to Israel, For the Lord will smite Israel as a reed is shaken in water. Israel are as the reed as the reed grows by the water, and its stock grows new shoots, and its roots are many, and even though all the winds of the universe come and blow at it, they cannot move it from its place for its ways. With the winds, and as soon as they have dropped, the reed resumes its upright position. But Balaam the wicked blessed them by comparing them with the cedar, as it is said, as cedars beside the waters, the cedar does not grow by the waterside, and its stock does not grow new shoots, and its roots are not many. And even though all the winds of the universe blow at it, they cannot move it from its place. If, however, the south wind blows at it, it uproots it and turns it upside down. Moreover, because of its yielding nature, the reed merited that of it should be made a pen for the writing of the law, the prophets, and hagiographer. Our rabbis have taught a man should always be gentle as the reed and never unyielding as the cedar. Once our Eliezer, son of our Simeon, was coming from Migdal Geder from the house of his teacher, and he was riding leisurely on his ass by the riverside and was feeling happy and elated because he had studied much Torah Talmud. Must be their chance to meet him and exceedingly. Ugly man who greeted him, peace be upon you, sir. He, however, did not return his salutation, but instead said to him, Raka, how ugly you are, all your fellow citizens, as ugly as you are. The man replied, I do not know, but go and tell the craftsman who made me how ugly is the vessel which you have made. When our Eliezer realized that he had done wrong, he dismounted from the ass and prostrated himself before the man and said to him, I submit myself to you, forgive me. The man replied, I will not forgive you. Until you go to the craftsman who made me and say to him, How ugly is the vessel which you have made? Here, Eliezer walked behind him until he reached his native city when his fellow citizens came out to meet him, greeting him with the words, Peace be upon you, O teacher, O master. The man asked them, Whom are you addressing us? They replied, The man who is walking behind you. Thereupon he exclaimed, If this man is a teacher, may there not be any more like him in Israel. The people then asked him why he replied such and such a thing has he done to me they said to him nevertheless forgive him for he is a man greatly learned in the Torah the man replied for your sakes I will forgive him but only on the condition that he does not act in the same manner in the future soon after this our Eliezer son of our Simeon entered the Beth Hamidrash and expounded thus a man should always be gentle as the reed and let him never be unyielding as the cedar and for this reason the reed merited that of it should be made a pen for the writing of the law phylacteries and mezuzoth and so too if a plague rages in a city or its buildings collapse etc our rabbis have taught the collapse spoken of refers only to sound buildings but not to those already dilapidated only to those which are not likely to fall in but not to those that are likely to fall in are not sound buildings the same as those that are not likely to fall in and are not those already dilapidated the same as those likely to fall in it is Necessary to distinguish between them when for instance they collapsed because of their excessive height or when they stood on the bank of a river in Nehardia there was a dilapidated wall and neither Rab nor Samuel would go past it although it had remained standing in the same position for thirteen years one day our Adabi Ahabah happened to come there and Samuel said to Rab come sir let us walk around it and the latter replied this precaution is not necessary now because our Adabi Ahabah is with us his merit is great and therefore I do not fear our Huna had once stored in a certain dilapidated house and he desired to remove it he took our Adabi Ahabah into that house and kept him occupied with traditional teaching until he had removed it as soon as he had left the house it fell and our Adabi Ahabah noticed this and was offended because he agreed with the statement of our who said a man should never stand in a place of danger and declare a miracle will befall me perhaps a miracle will not befall him, and if a miracle does befall him, he
Any vegetables that the market gardeners had left over he bought up and had then thrown into the river should he not rather have had these distributed among the poor he was afraid lest they would then at times be led to rely upon him and would not trouble to buy any for themselves why did he not give the vegetables to the domestic animals he was of the opinion that food fit for human consumption may not be given to animals and why did he purchase them at all this would lead the gardeners to do wrong in the future by not providing an adequate supply whenever he discovered some new medicine he would fill a water jug with it and suspend it above the doorstep and proclaim whosoever desires it let him come and take of it some say he knew from tradition a medicine for that disease Ibiza, and he would suspend a jug full of water and proclaim whosoever needs it let him come and wash his hands so that he may save his life from danger when he had a meal he would open it Door wide and declare whosoever is in need let him come and eat. Rabbi said all these things I could myself carry out except the last one Talmud, Mas Tiantha because there are so many in Mahuz Alpha and Aryohan and studied together the Torah and they found themselves in great want and they said one to another let us go and engage in commerce so that of us may be fulfilled the verse howbeit there shall be no need among you they went and sat down under a ruinous wall and while they were having their meal two ministering angels came and Aryohan and overheard one saying to the other let us throw this wall upon these people and kill them because they forsake life eternal and occupy themselves with life temporal the other angel replied leave them alone because one of them has still much to achieve Aryohan and heard this but Alpha did not whereupon Aryohan and said to Alpha master have you heard anything he replied no thereupon Aryohan and said to himself seeing that I heard this and Alpha has not it is evident that I am the one who still has much to achieve our Yohanan and said to Alpha I will go back that of me may be fulfilled for the poor shall never cease out of the land thereupon our Yohanan went back but Alpha did not when at last Alpha returned our Yohanan was already presiding over the school and the scholar said to him had you remained here and studied the Torah you might have been presiding Alpha and suspended himself from the mast of a ship and exclaimed if there is anyone who will ask me a question from the Berithas of Arhai and Arhashai and I fail to elucidate it from the Mishnah then I will throw myself down and be drowned in the sea and an old man came forward and cited the following Beritha if a man in his last will and testament declares give a shekel weekly to my sons but actually they needed a cellar then they should be given a cellar but if he declared give them a shekel only then they should be given a shekel if however he declared on their death Others should inherit their allowance in their stead, and whether he has declared give or give only, they are given a shekel only. He replied, This is in accordance with the view of our mayor, who said it is a duty to carry out the will of a dying man. It is related of Nahum of Gamza that he was blind in both his eyes, his two hands and legs were amputated, and his whole body was covered with boils, and he was lying in a dilapidated house on a bed, the feet of which were standing in bowls of water. In order to prevent the ants from crawling onto him, on one occasion his disciples desired to remove the bed and then clear the things out of the house, but he said to them, My children, first clear out the things from the house and then remove my bed, for I am confident that so long as I am in the house it will not collapse. They first cleared out the things and then they removed his bed, and the house immediately collapsed. Thereupon his disciples said to him, Master, since you are wholly righteous. Why has all this befallen you? And he replied, I have brought it all upon myself once I was journeying on the road and was making for the house of my father-in-law and I had with me three asses, one laden with food, one with drink and one with all kinds of dainties when a poor man met me and stopped me on the road and said to me, Master, give me something to eat. I replied to him, wait until I have unloaded something from the ass. I had hardly managed to unload something from the ass when the man died. From hunger I then went and laid myself on him and exclaimed, May my eyes which had no pity upon your eyes become blind, may my hands which had no pity upon your hands be cut off, may my legs which had no pity upon your legs be amputated, and my mind was not at rest until I added, May my whole body be covered with boils. Thereupon his pupils exclaimed, Alas that we see you in such a sore plight to this. He replied, What would it be to me? Did you not see me in such a sore plight? Why was he called Nahum? Of Gamzu because whatever befell him he would declare this also is for the best once the Jews desired to send to the emperor a gift and after discussing who should go they decided that Nahum of Gamzu should go because he had experienced many miracles they sent with him a bag full of precious stones and pearls he went and spent the night in a certain inn and during the night the people in the inn arose and emptied the bag and filled it up with earth when he discovered this next morning he exclaimed this also is for the best when he arrived at his destination and they undid his bag they found that it was full of earth the king thereupon desired to put them all to death saying the Jews are mocking me Nahum then exclaimed this also is for the best whereupon Elijah appeared in the guise of one of them and remarked perhaps this is some of the earth of their father Abraham for when he threw earth against the enemy it turned into swords and when he threw stubble it changed into Arrows for it is written his sword make them as dust as well as the driven stubble now there was one province which the emperor had hitherto not been able to conquer but when they tried some of this earth against it they were able to conquer it then they took him Nahum to the royal treasury and filled his bag with precious stones and pearls and sent him back with great honor when on his return journey he again spent the night in the same and he was asked what did you take to the king that they showed you such great honor he replied I brought thither what I had taken from here the innkeepers thereupon raised the into the ground and took of the earth to the king and they said to him the earth that was brought to you belonged to us they tested it and it was not found to be effective and the innkeepers were thereupon put to death what constitutes plague if in a city that can supply 500 foot soldiers etc our rabbis have taught if in a city that can supply 15 Hundred foot soldiers as for example far echo nine deaths take place in three consecutive days this constitutes plague if however these deaths take place in one day or in four days it is not plague and if in a city that can supply five hundred foot soldiers as for example far amico three deaths take place in three consecutive days this constitutes plague if however they take place in one day or in four days it is not plague Talmud, must be in Daroka Retha city that supply five hundred foot soldiers three deaths took place in one day whereupon our nomin B has taught ordained a public fast our nomin B Isaac said this must be in accordance with the authority of our mayor who declared if regarding at long intervals during three days there is full liability how much more so for going at short intervals in one day said our nomin B has taught to our nomin B Isaac pray take a seat nearer us the latter replied we have taught our Jose says it is not the place that honors the man but it is the man who honors the place we find it thus in connection with empty Sinai as long as the Shechinah dwelt there on the Torah declared neither let the flocks nor herds feed before that mount but once the Shechinah had departed thence the Torah said when the ram's horn sounded long they shall come up to the mount the same too we find in connection with the tent of meeting in the wilderness so long as it remained pitched the Torah commanded that they put out of the camp every leper but once. The curtains were rolled up both those with the running issue and the lepers were permitted to enter there and thereupon our historic retorted if so I will come nearer to you whereupon the latter replied it is more fitting that a scholar the son of an ordinary man should go to one who is a scholar and is the son of a scholar than the latter should go towards the former once a plague broke out in Surah but it did not affect the locality in which Rab resided people thought that this was on account of Rab's. Great merit, but in a dream it was made clear to them that this was far too small a matter to need Rab's great merit, but that it was on account of the merit of a certain man who made it a practice to lend shovel and spade for burials. Once a fire broke out in Darokarath, but it did not spread to the locality where Arhuna resided. People thought that it was on account of the great merit of Arhuna, but in a dream it was made clear to them that this was far too small a matter to need Arhuna's great merit, but that it was on account of a certain woman who on the eve of Sabbaths would eat her oven and permit her neighbors to make use of it. Once Rab Judah was informed that locusts had come and he ordained a fast, he was then told that no damage had been done. Whereupon he exclaimed, Have they then brought provision with them? Once Rab Judah was informed that pestilence was raging among the swine and he ordained a fast, can it then be concluded from this that Rab Judah is of the opinion that a Plague scourging one species of animals is likely to attack also other species. No, the case of the swine is exceptional because their intestines are like unto those of human beings. Once Samuel was informed that pestilence was raging amongst the inhabitants of Behozi and he ordained a fast, the people said to
cup for receiving the blood and which was slit at the shoulder and whenever a woman patient came to him he would put the garment on her shoulder in order not to see her exposed body he also had a place out of public gaze where the patients deposited their fees which he would charge those that could afford it put their fees there and thus those who could not pay were not put to shame whenever a young scholar happened to consult him not only would he accept no fee from him but on taking leave of him he also would give him some money at the same time adding go and regain strength there with one day Abbe sent to him two scholars in order to test him he received them and gave them food and drink and in the evening he prepared woolen mattresses for them to sleep on Talmud, Mosque in the morning the scholars rolled these together and took them to the market for sale there they met Abba and they said to him sir value these how much they are worth and he replied so and so. Much they said to him perhaps they are worth more he replied this is what I paid for them they then said to him they are yours we took them away from you tell us pray of what did you suspect us he replied I said to myself perhaps the rabbis needed money to redeem captives and they were ashamed to tell me they replied sir take them back he answered from the moment I missed them I dismissed them from my mind and I devoted them to charity Rabba was dejected because of the special honor shown to Abbe and he was therefore told be content that through your merit the whole city is protected. Our Baraka Hosea used to frequent the market at Bilop and where Elijah often appeared to him once he asked the prophet is there anyone in this market who has a share in the world to come he replied no meanwhile he caught sight of a man wearing black shoes and who had no thread of blue on the corners of his garment and he exclaimed this man has a share in the world to come he or Baraka ran after him and asked him what is your occupation and the man replied go away and come back tomorrow next day he asked him again what is your occupation and he replied I am a jailer and I keep the men and women separate and I place my bed between them so that they may not come to sin when I see a Jewish girl upon whom the Gentiles cast their eyes I risk my life and save her once there was amongst us a betrothed girl upon whom the Gentiles cast their eyes I therefore took leaves of red wine and put them in her skirt and I told him that she was unclean our Baraka further asked the man why have you no fringes and why do you wear black shoes he replied that the Gentiles amongst whom I constantly move may not know that I am a Jew so that when a harsh decree is made against Jews I inform the rabbis and they pray to God and the decree is annulled he further asked him when I asked you what is your occupation why did you say to me go away now and come back tomorrow he answered they had just issued a harsh decree and I said I would first go and acquaint the rabbis of it so that they might pray to God whilst they were thus conversing two men passed by and Elijah remarked these two have a share in the world to come our Baraka then approached and asked them what is your occupation they replied we are jesters when we see men depressed we cheer them up furthermore when we see two people quarreling we strive hard to make peace between them the alarm is sounded everywhere on account of the following visitations, etc. Our rabbis have taught the alarm is sounded everywhere on account of the following visitations. Blast, mildew, locust, crickets, and wild beasts are Akiva says for the slightest attack of blast and mildew. And in the case of locust and crickets, even if only one winged creature is seen, the alarm is sounded immediately for wild beasts, etc. Our rabbis have taught the alarm is sounded for wild beasts only when they are a divine visitation, but not otherwise. What constitutes a divine visitation and what does not when they make their appearance in the city? That is a divine visitation in the field. It is not by day. It is a divine visitation by night. It is not if a beast sees two persons and pursues them. It is a divine visitation, but if it hides itself on seeing them, it is not if it killed two persons and devoured only one of them. That is a divine visitation, but if it devoured both of them, it is not if it mounted the roof and carried off an infant. Out of the cradle that is a divine visitation is not this very the self-contradictory first you say if it makes its appearance in the city it is a visitation and no distinction is made whether this happens by day or by night and then you add it is a visitation but by night it is not there is no contradiction this is what is meant if it makes its appearance in the city by day it is a visitation but in the city by night it is not or in the field even by day it is not a visitation first you say if the beast sees two persons and pursues them it is a visitation which implies that if it remains still it is no visitation and then you add if it hides itself on seeing then it is not a visitation this would imply that if it remains still it is a visitation this is no contradiction in the one case it speaks of a beast in a field near Reedland in the other in a field not near Reedland you say if it kills two men and devours one of them that is a visitation but if it devours both of them it is not but did you not say that even if it only pursues two people that is a visitation our papa replied that speaks of a case where the beast is standing in reedland the above text states if it mounted the roof and carried off an infant out of the cradle it is a visitation is not the self-evident our papa replied the statement is meant to refer to the case of a beast carrying off an infant out of a cradle in a hunter's cave and the sword etc our rabbis have taught by sword is meant not only a hostile attack by an invading army but also the passing and route of a friendly army for there could be no more friendly army than that of pharaoh and yet through it king josiah met his fate as it is said talmud must be but he sent ambassadors to him saying what have i to do with thee thou king of judah i come not against thee this day but against the house wherewith i have war and god hath given command to speed me forbear thee from meddling with god who is with me that he destroyeth thee not what is meant by God who is with me. Rab Judah said in the name of Rab idols, Josiah said to himself, Since he Pharaoh puts his trust in his idols, I will prevail over him. And the archers shot at King Josiah, and the king said to his servants, Have me away, for I am sore wounded. What is meant by for I am sore wounded? Rab Judah said in the name of Rab, this teaches that his whole body was perforated like a sea. Our Samuel be he said in the name of our Jonathan. Josiah was punished because he should have consulted Jeremiah, and he did not. On what did Josiah rely on the divine promise contained in the words, Neither shall the sword go through your land. What sword is it? The warring sword, it is already stated in the same verse, and I will give peace in the land. It must surely refer to the peaceful sword. Josiah, however, did not know that his generation found but little favor in the eyes of God when he was dying. Jeremiah observed that his lips were moving. And he feared that perhaps heaven forfent Josiah was saying something improper because of his great pain he thereupon bent down and he overheard him justifying God's decree against himself saying the Lord is righteous for I have rebelled against his word he Jeremiah then cited of him the breath of our nostrils the anointed of the Lord it happened that the elders returned from Jerusalem to their own cities etc the question was asked does the mission mean as an oven full of grain or as an oven full of bread come in here as much as would fill the opening of an oven the following question however still remains does it mean as much bread as would close the opening of an oven or a row of loaves extending to the opening of the oven this is left undecided they also ordained a fast because wolves devoured etc Ola said in the name of our Simeon BG Hosea it happened that wolves devoured two children and they passed them out through their secretory canal and the question came up before the sages and they declared that the flesh of the children was clean but that their bones were unclean the alarm is sounded on the sabbath etc our rabbis have taught when a city is surrounded by hostile gentiles or threatened with inundation by the river or when a ship is foundering in the sea or when an individual is being pursued by gentiles or robbers or by an evil spirit the alarm is sounded even on the sabbath and on account of all these an individual may afflict himself by fasting our jose says an individual may not afflict himself by fasting lest thereby he come to need the help of his fellow men and it may be that they will not have mercy upon him rab judah said in the name of rab our jose's reason is because it is written and became a living soul scripture thereby implies god says keep alive the soul which i gave you simeon the temanite says the alarm is sounded also even on account of plague etc the question was asked did the rabbis disagree with him only when it was a question of sounding the alarm on the Sabbath but on weekdays they agreed with him or perhaps they did not agree with him in any circumstances come and hear the alarm is sounded on account of plague on the Sabbath and it goes without saying on weekdays our hand and be Patama, disciple of our Akiva said in the name of our Akiva we may not under any circumstances sound the alarm on account of plague the alarm is sounded on account of any visitation that comes upon the community our rabbis have taught the alarm is sounded on account of any visitation that comes upon the community except on account of an overabundance of rain why are Yohanan said because we may not pray on account of an excess of good are Yohanan further said once do we derive that we may not pray on account of an
Talmud, Mosta added another explanation in their season. This means that rain would fall only on the eve of Wednesdays and Sabbaths, for so it happened in the days of Simeon Bishada at that time rain fell on the eve of Wednesdays and Sabbaths, so that the grains of wheat came up as large as kidneys and the grains of barley like the stones of olives and of the lentils like the golden denarii, and they stored specimens of them for future generations in order to make known unto them the end. Effects of sin as it is said your iniquities have turned away these things and your sins have withholding good from you likewise we find happened in the days of Herod when the people were occupied with the rebuilding of the temple at that time rain fell during the night but in the morning the wind blew and the clouds dispersed and the sun shone so that the people were able to go out to their work and then they knew that they were engaged in sacred work it happened that the people said to each I, the circle drawer etc once it happened that the greater part of the month of Adar had gone and yet no rain had fallen the people sent a message to Honey the circle drawer pray that rain may fall he prayed and no rain fell he thereupon drew a circle and stood within it in the same way as the prophet Habakkuk had done as it is said I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower etc he exclaimed before God master of the universe thy children have turned to me because they believe me to be a member of thy house I swear by thy great name that I will not move from here until thou hast mercy upon thy children rain began to drip and his disciples said to him we look to you to save us from death we believe that this rain came down merely to release you from your oath thereupon he exclaimed it is not for this that I have prayed but for rain to fill cisterns ditches and caves the rain then began to come down with great force every drop being as big as the opening of a barrel and it sages estimated that no one drop was less than a log his disciples then said to him master we look to you to save us from death we believe that the rain came down to destroy the world thereupon he exclaimed before God it is not for this that I have prayed but for rain of benevolence blessing and bounty then rain fell normally until the Israelites in Jerusalem were compelled to go up for shelter to the temple mount because of the rain his disciples then said to him master in the same way as you have prayed for the rain to fall, pray for the rain to cease. He replied, I have it as a tradition that we may not pray on account of an excess of good. Despite this, bring unto me a bullock for a thanksgiving offering. They brought unto him a bullock for a thanksgiving offering, and he laid his two hands upon it and said, Master of the universe, thy people Israel, whom thou hast brought out from Egypt, cannot endure an excess of good nor an excess of punishment when thou wast angry with them. They could not endure it when thou didst shower upon them an excess of good. They could not endure it. May it be thy will that the rain may cease and that there be relief for the world. Immediately the wind began to blow and the clouds were dispersed and the sun shone and the people went out into the fields and gathered for themselves mushrooms and truffles. Thereupon Simeon Bishada sent this message to him, Were it not that you are holy, I would have placed you under the ban for worthy years like. The years of famine in the time of Elijah in whose hands were the keys of rain would not the name of heaven be profaned through you but what shall I do unto you who act petulantly before the omnipresent and he grants your desire as a son who acts petulantly before his father and he grants his desires thus he says to him father take me to bathe in warm water wash me in cold water give me nuts almonds peaches and pomegranates and he gives them unto him of you scripture says let thy father and thy mother be glad and let her that for thee rejoice our rabbis have taught what was the message that the Sanhedrin sent to Honey the circle drawer it was an interpretation of the verse thou shalt also decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee and light shall shine upon thy ways etc thou shalt also decree a thing you have decreed on earth below and the holy one blessed be he fulfills your word in heaven above and light shall shine upon thy ways you have illumined with your Prayer generation in darkness when they cast thee down thou shalt say there is lifting up you have raised with your prayer generation that has sunk low for the humble person he saveth you have saved by your prayer generation that is humiliated with sin he delivereth him that is not innocent you have delivered by your prayer generation that is not innocent yet he shall be delivered through the cleanliness of thy hands you have delivered it through the work of your clean hands are you had said this righteous man Honey was throughout the whole of his life troubled about the meaning of the verse a song of ascents when the Lord brought back those that returned to Zion we were like unto them that dream is it possible for a man to dream continuously for seventy years one day he was journeying on the road and he saw a man planting a carob tree he asked him how long does it take for this tree to bear fruit the man replied seventy years he then further asked him are you certain that you will live another seventy years. The man replied, I found ready grown carob trees in the world as my forefathers planted these for me, so I too plant these for my children. Honey sat down to have a meal and sleep overcame him as he slept. A rocky formation enclosed upon him which hid him from sight, and he continued to sleep for seventy years. When he awoke, he saw a man gathering the fruit of the carob tree, and he asked him, Are you the man who planted the tree? The man replied, I am his grandson. Thereupon he exclaimed, It is clear that I slept for seventy years. He then caught sight of his ass who had given birth to several generations of mules, and he returned home. He there inquired, Is the son of Honey the circle drawer still alive? The people answered him, His son is no more, but his grandson is still living there. Upon he said to them, I am Honey the circle drawer, but no one would believe him. He then repaired to the Beth Hamid Rash, and there he overheard the scholars say, The law is as clear to us as in the days of Honey the circle drawer for whenever he came to the Beth Hamidrash he would settle for the scholars any difficulty that they had whereupon he called out I am he but the scholars would not believe him nor did they give him the honor due to him this hurt him greatly and he prayed for death and he died Rabbi said hence the saying either companionship or death Abba was a grandson of Honey the circle drawer and whenever the world was in need of rain the rabbi sent a message to him and he prayed and rain fell once there was an urgent need for rain and the rabbi sent to him a couple of scholars to ask him to pray for rain they came to his house but they did not find him there they then proceeded to the fields and they found him there hoeing they greeted him Talmud, Mos Tainathbi but he took no notice of them towards evening he gathered some wood and placed the wood and the rake on one shoulder and his cloak on the other shoulder throughout the journey he walked barefoot but when he reached the stream he put his shoes on when he lighted upon thorns and thistles he lifted up his garments when he reached the city his wife well bedecked came out to meet him when he arrived home his wife entered first the house and then he and then the scholars he sat down to eat but he did not say to the scholars join me he then shared the meal among his children giving the older son one portion and the younger two he said to his wife I know the scholars have come on account of rain let us go up to the roof and pray perhaps the holy one blessed be he will have mercy and rain will fall without having credit given to us they went up to the roof he stood in one corner and she in another at first the clouds appeared over the corner where his wife stood when he came down he said to the scholars why have you scholars come here they replied the rabbis have sent us to you sir to ask you to pray for rain thereupon he exclaimed blessed be God who has made you no longer dependent on Abba Hilkiah, they replied, we know that the rain has come on your account, but tell us, sir, the meaning of these mysterious acts of yours which are bewildering to us, why did you not take notice of us when we greeted you? He answered, I was a laborer hired by the day, and I said, I must not relax from my work, and why did you, sir, carry the wood on one shoulder and the cloak on the other shoulder? He replied, it was a borrowed cloak, I borrowed it for one purpose to wear, and not for any other purpose, why did you, sir, go barefoot throughout the whole journey? But when you came to a stream, you put your shoes on, he replied, what was on the road I could see, but not what was in the water, why did you, sir, lift up your garments whenever you lighted upon thorns and thistles? He replied, this the body heals itself, but the other the clothes does not, why did your wife come out well bedecked to meet you, sir, when you entered the city? He replied, in order that I might not set my eyes on any other woman why sir did she enter the house first and you after her and then we replied because I did not know your character why sir did you not ask us to join you in the meal he replied because there was not sufficient food for all why did you give sir one portion to the older son and two portions to the younger he replied because the one stays at home and the other is away in the synagogue the whole day why sir did the clouds appear first in the corner where your wife stood and then in your corner he replied because a wife stays at home and gives bread to the poor which they can at once enjoy whilst I give them money which they cannot at once enjoy or perhaps it may have to do with certain robbers in our neighborhood I prayed that they might die but she prayed that they might repent and they did repent Hanan Hanan was
Passing the grave, the knees of their horses became stiff and remained so until they undertook not to persecute him any longer. Again, Armani used often to attend the discourses of our Isaac B. Eliashib, and he complained the rich members of the family of my father in law are annoying me. The latter exclaimed, May they become poor, and they became poor later on. He Armani complained, They pressed me for support, and our Isaac exclaimed, Let them become rich, and they became rich on another occasion. He complained, My wife is no longer acceptable to me. Our Isaac thereupon asked, What is her name? He replied, Hannah, whereupon our Isaac exclaimed, May Hannah become beautiful, and she became beautiful. He then complained, She is too domineering over me. Whereupon our Isaac exclaimed, If that is so, let Hannah revert to her former ugliness, and she became once again ugly. Two disciples used to attend the discourses of our Isaac B. Eliashib, and they said to him, Master, pray that we may become very wise. He replied, once I had the power to do this, but now I no longer possess this power. Our Jose B. Abin used to attend the discourses of our Jose of Yogaref. Later he left him and went to those of our Ashi Talmud. Mas Tayanatha one day he heard him reciting a tradition that Samuel had said he that takes out of the sea a fish on the Sabbath as soon as there is on it a dry spot as large as a cellar he has committed a breach of the Sabbath laws. Thereupon our Jose B. Abin asked him why does not the master at and between the fence he replied, Are you not aware that our Jose B. Abin had already stated this? The former retorted, I am our Jose B. Abin. Thereupon our Ashi inquired, Did you not frequent the discourses of our Jose of Yogaref? He replied, Yes, our Ashi then asked him, Why did you leave him, sir, and come here? He replied, How could the man who showed no mercy to his son and daughter show mercy to me? What happened to his son once our Jose had day laborers working in the field night set in and no food was brought to them? And they said to his son, We are hungry now. They were resting under a fig tree, and he exclaimed, Fig tree, fig tree, bring forth thy fruit that my father's laborers may eat. It brought forth fruit, and they ate. Meanwhile, the father came and said to them, Do not bear a grievance against me. The reason for my delay is because I have been occupied up till now on an errand of charity. The laborers replied, May God satisfy you, even as your son has satisfied us. Whereupon he asked whence, and they told him what had happened. Thereupon he said to his son, My son, you have troubled your creator to cause the fig tree to bring forth its fruits before its time. May you too be taken hence before your time. What happened to his daughter? He had a beautiful daughter. One day he saw a man boring a hole in the fence so that he might catch a glimpse of her. He said to the man, What is the meaning of this? And the man answered, Master, if I am not worthy enough to marry her, may I not at least be worthy to catch a Glimpse of her thereupon he exclaimed, My daughter, you are a source of trouble to mankind. Return to the dust so that men may not sin because of you. He also had an ass when it was hired out for the day. The people who hired it would place in the evening the hire on its back, and the ass would make its way home to its master. If however the money was too much or too little, it would not go. One day a pair of sandals were left on its back, and the ass would not move until they were removed, and only then did it proceed. Whenever the collectors of charity caught sight of our Eliezer Bieber, they would hide themselves from him because he was in the habit of giving away to them all that he had. One day he was going to the market to buy a trousseau for his daughter. When the collectors of charity caught sight of him, they hid themselves from him. He ran after them and said to them, I you tell me on what mission are you engaged? And they replied, The marriage of an orphan pair, he said to. Then I swear they must take precedence over my daughter, and he took all that he had and gave to them. He was left with one Zeus, and with this he bought wheat, which he deposited in the granary. When his wife returned house, she asked her daughter, What did your father bring home? She replied, He has put in the granary all that he had bought. She thereupon went to open the door of the granary, and she found that it was so full of wheat that the wheat protruded through the hinges of the door socket, and the door would not open on account of this. The daughter then went to the Beth Hamadrash and said to him, Her father, come and see what your friend has done for you. Whereupon he said to her, Elsewhere they shall be to you as devoted property, and you shall have no more right to share in them than any poor person in Israel. Our Judah the prince ordained a fast, and he prayed, but no rain fell. He thereupon exclaimed, What a great difference there is between Samuel the Ramadi and Judah the son of Gamaliel. Whoa. To the generation that finds itself in such plight, woe to him in whose days this has happened. He felt very grieved, and rain fell once the house of the patriarch ordained a fast and did not inform either Aryohanan or Reshlakish in the morning. However, they did notify them. Reshlakish then said to Aryohanan, But we have not undertaken the fast on the previous evening. The latter replied, We are subject to their ordinances once the house of the patriarch ordained a fast and no rain fell thereupon. Ashai, the youngest of the college scholars, expounded the verse, Then it shall be if it be done in error by the congregation. This can be compared to a bride who lives in the house of her father so long as her eyes are beautiful. Her body needs no examination, should however her eyes be bleared, and her body needs examination. Thereupon the servants of the patriarch came and put a scarf around his neck and tortured him, whereupon the people of the city cried out, Leave him alone, us also he insults. But since we see that whatever he does is for the sake of heaven, we say nothing to him and we leave him alone. So you two leave him alone. Once Rabbi ordained a fast and no rain fell thereupon. Ilfasim say Arilfi stepped down before the ark and recited the prayer. He causeth the wind to blow and the wind blew. He continued, He causeth the rain to fall and rain fell. Rabbi then asked him, What is your special merit? He replied, I live in a poverty stricken remote place where wine for Kiddush and Havdalah is unobtainable, but I take the trouble to procure for myself wine for Kiddush and Havdalah and thus help also others to fulfill their duty. Once Rab came to a certain place and decreed a fast, but no rain fell. The reader then stepped down at his request before the ark and recited, He causeth the wind to blow and the wind blew. He continued, He causeth the rain to fall and rain fell. Rab thereupon asked him, What is your special merit? The latter replied, I am a teacher of young children and I teach the children of the poor as well as those of the rich. I take no fees from any who cannot afford to pay further. I have a fish pond and any boy who is reluctant to learn I bribe with some of the fishes from it and thereby appease him so that he becomes eager to learn once our Naman ordained a fast and he prayed but no rain fell. He thereupon said take Naman and throw him down from the wall to the ground. He felt greatly dejected and then rain came. Rabbi once decreed a fast he prayed but no rain came thereupon the people remarked to him when Rabbi Judah ordained a fast rain did fall. He replied what can I do is it because of studies we are superior to him because in the time of our Judah all studies were concentrated on Talmud, Mastayan at Benezikin whereas we study all the six sections when our Judah reached the passage in the Mishnah if a woman was preserving vegetables in a pot etc. or as some say the passage if olives are preserved together with their leaves then the leaves are not susceptible to uncleanness, he exclaimed, I see here disputations of Rab and Samuel, and yet we today teach Akazan in thirteen different sessions, and yet when Rab Judah removed one shoe as a sign of humiliation, rain fell, but when we cry out the whole day, no one pays need to us, is it because of some failing? If so, let anyone who knows of it declare it, what however can the great men of a generation do when their generation does not appear good enough to favor in the eyes of God once Rab? Judah saw two men using bread wastefully, and he exclaimed, It seems that there is plenty in the world. He gave an angry look, and a famine arose thereupon. The rabbi said to Arkahana, the son of Arnihun, his attendant, you who are so constantly with him, endeavor to persuade him to go out by the door near the marketplace. He prevailed upon him, and he went out to the marketplace, and seeing there a large crowd, he asked, What is the matter? He was told, They stand around a mass of ground dates, which is on sale whereupon he exclaimed it seems that there is famine in the world he then said to his disciple take off my shoes as soon as he had taken off one shoe rain fell as he was about to take off the other Elijah appeared and said to him the holy one blessed be he said if you will take off the other shoe I will lay waste the world Armari the son of the daughter of Samuel related once I was standing on the bank of the river Papa and I saw angels in the guise of sailors who brought sand and loaded ships with it and it turned into fine flour when the people came to purchase it I called out to them do not buy this because it resulted from a miracle next day boat loads of wheat came from Berzina once Rabbi came to Hagrani and ordained a fast but no rain fell thereupon he said to the people continue with your fasting overnight next morning he said to them if there
Sipped a plateful of grits and he again prayed, but still no rain fell there upon Arnam and Bishwazardi said to him, If you sir will sip another plateful of grits, rain would fall. Rabba felt humiliated and faint and rain fell. Arhana Abidosa was journeying on the road when it began to rain. He exclaimed, Master of the universe, the whole world is at ease, but Hannah is in distress. The rain then ceased when he reached home. He exclaimed, Master of the universe, the whole world is in distress, and Hannah is at ease. Whereupon rain fell with reference to this incident. Our Joseph remarked of what avail was the prayer of the high priest on the day of atonement against that of Arhana Abidosa, for we have learned the high priest on the day of atonement prayed a short prayer in the outer room of the temple. What did he pray? Rabba son of Arhana and Rabin son of Arhana both said in the name of Rabjuda, may it be thy will, O Lord our God, that this year may be one of rain and of heat is than heat. Beneficial is it not rather something harmful rather the prayer reads us if the year is to be a year of heat let it also be a year of rain and of dew and let the prayer of those journeying on the roads gain admission before the Araha the son of Rabbah in the name of Rab Judah completed the prayer as follows may a ruler never cease from the house of Judah and may Israel never be in need of sustenance one from another nor from another people Rab Judah said in the name of Rab every day. Heavenly voice is heard declaring the whole world draws its sustenance because of the merit of Hanan my son and Hanan my son suffices himself with a cab of carrots from one Sabbath Eve to another every Friday his wife would light the oven and throw twigs into a Talmud, Mosh Hanan so as not to be put to shame she had a bad neighbor who said he know that these people have nothing what then is the meaning of all the smoke she went and knocked at the door the wife of Arhanan feeling. Humiliated at this retired into a room a miracle happened and her neighbor saw the oven filled with loaves of bread and the kneading trough full of dough she called out to her you, you bring your shovel for your bread is getting charred and she replied I just went to fetch it and it taught she actually had gone to fetch the shovel because she was accustomed to miracles once his wife said to him how long shall we go on suffering so much he replied what shall we do pray that something may be given to you she replied he prayed and there emerged the figure of a hand reaching out to him a leg of a golden table thereupon he saw in a dream that the pious would one day eat at a three-legged golden table but he would eat at a two-legged table her husband said to her are you content that everybody shall eat at a perfect table and we at an imperfect table she replied what then shall we do pray that the leg should be taken away from you she replied he prayed and it was taken away Tana taught the latter miracle was greater than the former for there is a tradition that a thing may be given but once it is never taken away again once on a Friday he noticed that his daughter was sad and he said to her my daughter why are you sad she replied my oil can got mixed up with my vinegar can and I kindled up at the Sabbath light he said to her my daughter why should this trouble you he who had commanded the oil to burn will also command the vinegar to burn Tana taught it. Light continued to burn the whole day until they took up it light for the hot dollar Hannah Bidosa had goats on being told that they were doing damage he exclaimed if they indeed do damage may bears devour them but if not may they each of them at evening time bring home a bear on their horns in the evening each of them brought home a bear on their horns once a woman neighbor of Arhanna was building a house but the beams would not reach the wall she thereupon came to him and said I have built. A house, but the beams will not reach the walls. He asked her, What is your name? She replied, Iku. He thereupon exclaimed, Iku, may your beams reach the walls. Atana taught they projected one cubit on either side. Some say new pieces joined themselves miraculously to the beams. It has been taught. Polamo says, I saw that house and its beams projected one cubit on either side. And people told me this is the house which Arhana Abidosa covered with beams through his prayer. Once did Arhana Abidosa have goats, seeing that he was poor, and furthermore did not the sages say, We may not rear small cattle in Palestine. Arfineha said, Once it happened that a man passed by his house and left their hands, and the wife of Arhana Abidosa found them. Her husband, however, forbade her to eat of their eggs as the eggs and the chickens increased in number. He was very troubled by them, and he therefore sold them. And with the proceeds, he purchased goats. One day, the man who lost the hands passed by the house. Again and said to his companions, Here I left my hands. Arhanan overhearing this asked him, Have you any sign by which to identify them? He replied, Yes, he gave him the sign and took away the goats. These were the goats that brought bears on their horns. Our Eliezer B. Pedath found himself in very great want once after being bled. He had nothing to eat. He took the skin of garlic and put it into his mouth. He became faint and he fell asleep. The rabbis coming to see him noticed that he was crying and laughing and that a ray of light was radiating from his forehead. When he awoke, they asked him, Why did you cry and laugh? He replied, Because the Holy One blessed be. He was sitting by my side and I asked him, How long will I suffer in this world? And he replied, Eliezer, my son, would you rather that I should turn back the world to its very beginnings? Perhaps you might then be born at a happier hour. I replied, All this and then only perhaps I then asked him, Which is the greater life, the one that I had? Already lived or the one I am still to live, he replied, the one that I have already lived, I then said to him, if so I do not want it, he replied, as a reward for refusing it, I will grant you in the next world thirteen rivers of balsam oil as clear as the Euphrates and the Tigris which you will be able to enjoy, I asked, and nothing more, he replied, and what shall I then give to your fellow men, I said, do I then ask the share of one who has nothing, he thereupon snapped at my forehead and exclaimed, Eliezer, my son, I have shot you with my arrows, Arham Abihan, and ordained a fast, but no rain fell, people said to him, when our Joshua be Levi ordained a fast, rain did fall, he replied, I am I, and he is the son of Levi, go and ask him that he may come and pray for us, and let us concentrate on our prayer, perhaps the whole community will be contrite in heart, and rain will fall, they prayed, and no rain fell, he then asked them, are you content that rain should fall on our account, they replied, yes, he then. Exclaimed heaven heaven covered thy face but it did not cover its face he then added how brazen is the face of heaven it then became covered and rain fell Levi ordained a fast but no rain fell he thereupon exclaimed master of the universe thou didst go up and take thy seat on high and hast no mercy upon thy children rain fell but he became lame our Eliezer said let a man never address himself in a reproachful manner towards God seeing that one great man did so and he became lame and he is Levi. But was this actually the cause of his lameness was it not rather because he demonstrated to Rabbi a particular form of prostration both were the cause of his lameness our high below and he overhearing the cloud saying to one another come let us take water to Ammon and Moab exclaimed master of the universe when thou wast about to give the law to thy people Israel thou didst offer it around amongst all the nations of the world but they would not accept it and now thou wouldst give them rain let then the clouds empty their waters here and they emptied their waters on the spot. Our high below and he expounded what is the meaning of the verse the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree he shall glow like a cedar in Lebanon if it is said palm tree why is also said cedar and if cedar why also palm tree had it been said palm tree and not cedar I might have argued that just in the same way Talmud must have as the stem of the palm tree does not renew itself so too the stem of it. Righteous heaven forfend does not renew itself therefore it is said cedar had it been said cedar and not palm tree I might have argued that just in the same way as the cedar does not yield fruit so too the righteous do not yield fruit therefore it is said palm tree and cedar but does the stem of the cedar renew itself surely it has been taught if one buys a tree from his neighbor for felling he must leave of the trunk one hand breadth from the ground of the trunk of the sycamore tree too. Hand breadth of the virgin sycamore tree, three hand breadths of reeds and of vines from the knot above it. In the case, however, of date palms and cedars, he may dig into the ground and uproot them because their stock does not renew itself. Here it speaks of other types of cedar trees in accordance with the statement of Rabbi Bihuna who said there are ten types of cedar trees, as it is said, I will plant in the wilderness the cedar, the acacia tree, and the myrtle tree, etc. Our rabbis have taught it is related of our Eliezer that he ordained thirteen fasts upon the community, and no rain fell in the end as the people began to depart from the synagogue. He exclaimed, Have you prepared graves for yourselves there upon the people sobbed loudly and rain fell? It is further related of our Eliezer that once he stepped down before the ark and recited the twenty-four benedictions for fast days, and his prayer was not answered. Our Akiba stepped down after him and exclaimed, Our Father, our King, we have no king. But the Our Father, our
The flowers appear on the earth, etc. If whilst they are fasting, rain falls. If it is before sunrise, etc. Our rabbis have taught if whilst they are fasting, rain falls. If it is before sunrise, they need not complete the fast. If it is after sunrise, they must complete it. This is the opinion of our Meir. Our Judah says if before midday, they need not complete the fast. If after midday, they must complete it. Our Jose says if before the ninth hour, they need not complete the fast. If after the ninth hour, they must complete it. For thus we find it in the case of Ahab, king of Israel, that he fasted from the ninth hour onwards, as it is said, See how Ahab humbled himself before me, etc. Our Judah, the prince ordained to fast, and rain fell after sunrise. He was of the opinion that the people should complete the fast. Said our Ami to him, We have learned there is a difference between before midday and after midday. Samuel, the little ordained to fast, and rain fell before sunrise. The people thought that it was due to. The merit of the community whereupon he said to them I will quote you a parable this can be compared to a servant who asked his master for a gratuity and the master exclaimed give it to him and let me not hear his voice another time Samuel the little ordained to fast and rain fell after sunset the people thought that it was due to the merit of the community whereupon Samuel exclaimed I will quote you a parable this can be compared to a servant who asked his master for a gratuity and the master exclaimed keep him waiting until he is made submissive and is distressed and then give him his gratuity according to Samuel the little what would be an instance of rain falling on account of the merit of the community if they recited the prayer he causeth the wind to blow and the wind blew and if they recited he causeth the rain to fail and rain fell it happened that the rabbis ordained to fast in Lydia etc should they not have recited the hell first Abay and Rabbah explained this to be because the hell is recited Talmud, Mos Tiyanath only when the appetite is satisfied and the stomach is full is that so did not our Papa on one occasion when coming to the synagogue at A.B. Icobar ordained a fast and rain fell before midday and yet he first recited the hell and only after that the people ate and drank it is different with the people of Mahusa because drunkenness is frequent amongst them C.H.A.P.T.E.R.I.B. mission on three occasions of the year on fast days on Mahamedoth and on the day of atonement do the priests lift up their hands to bless the people four times during the day namely at the Shaharat service at Musaf at Minha and at the closing of the gates and Eila the following are the details concerning the Mahamedoth because it is said command the children of Israel and say unto them my food which is presented unto me now how can a man's offering be brought on the altar and he is not present therefore the earlier prophets instituted twenty four. Mishmarot and each Mishmar was represented at the temple in Jerusalem by its own Ma'amati of priests, Levites, and Israelites. When the time came for the Mishmar to go up to Jerusalem, the priests and Levites went up to Jerusalem, and the Israelites of that Mishmar assembled in their cities and read from the law the story of creation. The men of the Israelite Ma'amati fasted on four days of that week from Monday to Thursday. They did not fast on Friday out of respect for the Sabbath nor on Sunday in order not to change over without a break from the rest and delight of the Sabbath to weariness and fasting, and so perhaps die on Sunday. They read in the beginning and let there be a firmament on Monday, let there be a firmament, and let the waters be gathered together on Tuesday, let the waters be gathered together, and let there be lights on Wednesday, let there be lights, and let the waters swarm on Thursday, let the waters swarm, and let the earth bring forth on Friday, let the Earth bring forth and, and the heavens and the earth were finished. Two persons read between them a long section and one a short section at Shaharat Musaf and Minha. They assembled and read the requisite section by heart in the same way as people recite the Shema. They did not assemble at Minha on Friday out of respect for the Sabbath. On any day when Hallel was recited, there was no Ma'amati service at Shaharat. On the day when the Musaf offering was brought, there was none at any Ilan. The day observed as the wood festival, there was none at Minha. This is the opinion of our Akiba Ben said to him, Thus did our Joshua learn on the day when the Musaf offering was brought, there was none at Minha. On the day observed as the wood festival, there was none at the closing of the gates. Thereupon our Akiba retracted and learned like Ben Aze nine times in the year was observed the wood festival of the priests and the people on the first of Nis in the family of Era of the tribe of. Judah brought the offering of wood on the twentieth of Tammuz, the family of David of the tribe of Judah, on the fifth of the family of Barash of the tribe of Judah, on the seventh of the same month, the family of Jonadab of the Rechabites, on the tenth of the same month, the family of Sina of the tribe of Benjamin, on the fifteenth of the same month, the family of Zadok of the tribe of Judah, and with them were the priests and Levites and all those who were not certain of their tribe and the Bani. Gan B. Ali and the Bani Kozeekaziyat, on the twentieth of the same month, the family of Pahit Moab of the tribe of Judah, on the twentieth of Eluel, the family of Adin of the tribe of Judah, on the first of Tevate, the family of Barash, a second time on the first of Tevate, there was no Ma'amati, for thereon there was Halal Musaf offering and the wood festival. Five misfortunes befell our fathers on the seventeenth of Tammuz and five on the ninth of on the seventeenth of Tammuz Talmud, Mos Tiyanipi. The tables of the law were shattered, the daily offering was discontinued, a breach was made in the city, and Apostomus burned the scroll of the law and placed an idol in the temple on the ninth of it was decreed that our fathers should not enter the promised land. The temple was destroyed the first and second time Bethar was captured, and the city Jerusalem was plucked up with the beginning of the rejoicings are curtailed during the week in which the ninth of it falls. It is forbidden to cut the hair and to wash clothes, but on the Thursday it is permissible in honor of the Sabbath on the eve of the ninth of it one may not partake of a meal of two courses, nor eat meat, nor drink wine. Rabbin Simeon B. Gamaliel said one should make a difference in his diet. Our Judah makes it obligatory to turn the bed over the sages, however, did not agree with him in this. Our Simeon B. Gamaliel said there never were in Israel greater days of joy than the fifteenth of it and the day of atonement on these. Days the daughters of Jerusalem used to walk out in white garments which they borrowed in order not to put to shame anyone who had none. All these garments required ritual dipping. The daughters of Jerusalem came out and danced in the vineyards, exclaiming at the same time, Young man, lift up thine eyes and see what thou choosest for thyself. Do not set thine eyes on beauty, but set thine eyes on good family graces. Deceitful and beauty is being but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be. Praise and it further says, Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates. Likewise, it says, Go forth, O ye daughters of Zion, and gaze upon King Solomon, even upon the crown wherewith his mother hath crowned him in the day of his espousals and in the day of the gladness of his heart. On the day of his espousals, this refers to the day of the giving of the law, and in the day of the gladness of his heart, this refers to the building of the temple. May it be rebuilt speedily. In our days, Gamar, on three occasions of the year, do the priests lift up their hands to bless the people? Is there then music on fast days and on Mahamedoth? There is a clause wanting in our mission. It should read thus: On three occasions, do the priests lift up their hands to bless the people at all services and on one of these occasions, four times during the day at the Shaharat service at Musaf at Minha and at the closing of the gates. The following are the three occasions: fast days, Mahamedoth, and the day of atonement. Our Naman said in the name of Rabbi Abba, this is the opinion of our Meir. The sages, however, say at Shaharat and at Musaf there is lifting up of hands, but at Minha or at any Isla there is no lifting up of hands who are meant by the sages. It is our Judah, for it has been taught at all services, namely at Shaharat and Musaf at Minha and at any Isla there is lifting up of hands. This is the opinion of our Meir. Our Judah says at Shaharat and at Musaf there is lifting. Up of hands, but at Minha or any Isla there is no lifting up of hands. Our Jose says at any Isla there is lifting up of hands, but at Minha there is no lifting up of hands. Wherein do they differ? Our Meir holds of view that the reason why on ordinary days the priests do not lift up their hands at Minha is because of the likelihood of intoxication. But on the day side above the question of intoxication does not arise. Our Judah takes the view that as drunkenness during the time of Shaharat and Musaf on ordinary days is not usual. The rabbis did not prohibit the lifting up of hands at these services on fast days. Also, whereas at the time of Minha and any Isla since on ordinary days drunkenness is quite a likely occurrence, the rabbis prohibited the lifting up of hands at these services even on fast days. Our
That is so, and just as the Nazi right is forbidden to eat the shells of grapes, so too should the priest about to recite the priestly benediction be forbidden to eat the shells of grapes. Our Isaac replied, Scripture says to minister unto him and to bless in his name from this is to be inferred that just as the officiating priest may eat the shells of grapes, so too may the priest about to recite the priestly benediction Talmud, Mast Hayat if so, why not also argue just as an officiating priest may not be blemished, so too may a priest reciting the benediction not be blemished. Surely he is compared to the Nazi right. Why do you choose to make your analogies more lenient for the priest? Why not make your analogies more strict for him? These analogies are but supports for a rabbinical law, and they must therefore incline towards the side of leniency. The following are the details concerning the Mahamedo, because it is said, Command the children of Israel, etc. What does? This mission I mean to say this is what it means to say the following are the details concerning the Mahamedo and why were the Mahamedo instituted because it is said command the children of Israel and say unto them my food which is presented unto me how can a man's offering be brought on the altar and he is not present therefore the earlier prophets instituted 24 mishmar each mishmar was represented at the temple in Jerusalem by its own Mahamedi of priests Levites and Israelites when the time came for the mishmar to go up the priests and Levites went up to Jerusalem our rabbis have taught there were 24 mishmar in Palestine and 12 in Jericho you say there were also 12 in Jericho then there were actually far more than 24 it must therefore be understood to mean that 12 of them of the 24 were in Jericho when the time came for the mishmar to go up to Jerusalem one half of the mishmar went up from their homes in Palestine to Jerusalem and the other half went up to Jericho in order to provide their brethren in Jerusalem with water and food. Rab Judah said in the name of Samuel the absence of the priest's levites and Israelites is a bar to the offering of the sacrifices attended taught our Simeon B. Eliezer said the absence of priest's levites and musical instruments is a bar to the offering of the sacrifices on what question does their dispute turn the one Rab Judah holds of you that the principal music of the temple was vocal and the other that it was with an instrument our Hamabi Guria said in the name of Rab Moses instituted for Israel eight Mishmarot four from the family of Eliezer and four from the family of Ithamar Samuel came and increased them to sixteen David came and increased them to twenty four as it is said in the fortieth year of the reign of David they were sought for and they were found among the mighty men of valor at Jazer of Gilead an objection was raised against. This Moses instituted for Israel eight Mishmarot four from the family of Eliezer and four from the family of Ithamar David and Samuel came and increased them to twenty four as it is said whom David and Samuel the seer did ordain in their set office this is what the passage means from their institution by David and Samuel the Ramadite they were increased to twenty four another buried the top Moses instituted for Israel sixteen Mishmarot eight from the family of Eliezer and eight from the family of Ithamar but when the descendants of Eliezer increased in number above those of Ithamar the Mishmarot were again divided and they were increased to twenty four as it is said and there were more chief men found of the sons of Eliezer than of the sons of Ithamar and thus were they divided of the sons of Eliezer there were sixteen heads of fathers houses and of the sons of Ithamar according to their fathers houses eight and it says further one father's house being taken for. Eliezer and proportionately for Ithamar what is the force of the additional verse cited should you say that just as the descendants of Eliezer increased in number so also those of Ithamar increased from their original four into eight then come and hear one father's house being taken for Eliezer and proportionately we will for Ithamar this very will then refute the opinion of Arham Abigiri Arham Abigiri will answer by saying Tanaim are divided on the question and I accept it. Opinion of the Tana who says that Moses instituted only eight Mishmarot our rabbis have taught four Mishmarot returned from the Babylonian exile and they were Jedi Haram Hashur and Imr the prophets amongst them Talmud, Mastayan of and divided them and increased them to twenty four lots were prepared and mixed and placed in an urn first came Jedi and took his portion and the portions of his colleagues six in all then came Haram and took his portion and the portions. Of his colleagues six in all and likewise Pasher and likewise Immer and the prophets amongst them stipulated that even if Jehoiarab who was the chief of the Mishmarot should go up to Jerusalem Jedeah should not be ousted from his place but Jedeah should have precedence and Jehoiarab should be subordinate to him and the Israelites of the Mishmar assembled in their cities and read from the law the story of creation on what is this based our Jacob Biaha said in the name of R.C. were. It not for the Mahamed of heaven and earth could not endure as it is said and he said O Lord God whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it Abraham said master of the universe should Israel sin before thee wilt thou do unto them as thou hast done to the generation of the flood and to the generation of the dispersion God replied to him no he then said to him master of the universe let me know whereby I shall inherit it God answered take me a heifer of three years old and a she goat of Three years old, etc. Abraham and continued master of the universe, this holds good whilst the temple remains in being, but when the temple will no longer be what will become of them, God replied, I have already long ago provided for them in the Torah the order of sacrifices, and whenever they read it, I will deem it as if they had offered them before me, and I will grant them pardon for all their iniquities. Our rabbis have taught the men of the Mishmar prayed over the sacrifice of their brethren, that it may be favorably accepted whilst the men of the Mahomet assembled in their synagogues and observed four fasts on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of that week. On Monday they fasted for those that go down to the sea on Tuesday for those who travel in the deserts on Wednesday that group may not attack children on Thursday for pregnant women and nursing mothers that pregnant women should not suffer a miscarriage and that nursing mothers may be able to nurse their infants on Friday. They did not fast out of respect for the Sabbath and certainly not on the Sabbath. Why did they not fast on Sunday? Our Yohanan said because of the Nazarenes. Our Samuel Binamani said because it is the third day after the creation of man. Rush Lakish said because of the additional soul for Rush Lakish said man is given an additional soul on Friday. But at the termination of the Sabbath it is taken away from him as it is said he ceased from work and rested Shabbat W.A. Unifash that is to say once the rest had ceased. Woe that soul is God on Sunday they read in the beginning and let there be a firmament. It has been taught two persons read the section in the beginning and one let there be a firmament. I can understand one person reading let there be a firmament as it contains three verses. But how can two persons read in the beginning seeing that it contains only five verses has it not been taught he who reads the law should not read less than three verses. Rab answered the third verses. Repeated Samuel said it is divided into two Rab who says that the third verse is repeated why does he not agree that it is divided he is of the opinion that any verse which Moses did not divide we may not divide and as for Samuel who says that it is divided may it then be divided did not our hand of the Bible teacher declare I endeavored hard to get permission from our hand of the elder to divide a verse into two and he would permit me only in the case of teaching children because it is merely for teaching practice to the Samuel can reply there in the case of school children the reason why our hand permitted the verse to be divided was because it is not possible for them to read the whole verse at one stretch here too it is not possible and as for Samuel who said it is divided why should he not agree that it be repeated in order to prevent any misunderstanding on the part of those who may enter or leave the synagogue an objection was raised a section of six verses is read by Two, but a section of five verses by one should however the first person have read three verses then the second person reads the remaining two and one verse from the following section some say he reads three verses from the following section because we do not read from a new section less than three verses now in accordance with the view of him who says that it should be repeated let then the third verse of the first section be repeated and in accordance with the view of him who says that it should be divided let the verse be divided there the position is different Talmud, Mas Tayanatha because he has plenty of verses at his disposal two persons read a long section at Chaharat Musaf and Minha they read the requisite section by heart etc the question was raised how is this mission to be understood does it mean that at Chaharat and Musaf the section is read from a scroll of the law and at Minha by heart in the same manner as people recite the Shema or it means this Echaharat it is read from a scroll of the law and at Musaf and Minha by heart in the same manner as people recite the Shema come and hear Echaharat and Musaf they assemble in the synagogue and read from the scroll of the law in the same way as all the year round but at Minha an individual reads it by heart our
In the line with them were the priests and the Levites and all those who etc. Our rabbis have taught what is the incident connected with the Bani Gambi Ali and the Bani Kos Kizia. It is reported that once the ruling power made a decree that Israel should not bring wood to the altar nor bring their first fruit to Jerusalem and place guards on the roads as Jeroboam the son of Nebat had done to prevent Israel from going on pilgrimage, what did the pious and sin-fearing men of that generation? Do they took the baskets of the first fruit and covered them with dry figs and carried them with a pestle on their shoulders? And when they reached the guards, they were asked, "Whither are you going?" They replied, "With the pestle on our shoulders, we are going to make two cakes of pressed figs in the mortar we have yonder." When they had gone away from the guard, they decorated the baskets and brought them to Jerusalem. It has been taught the family of Salami Nehofa acted in a similar way. Our rabbis have taught what is the incident connected with the family of Salami Nehofa. It is reported that once the ruling power decreed that Israel should not bring wood to the altar, and they placed guards on the roads as Jeroboam the son of Nebat had done to prevent Israel from going on pilgrimage. What did the God-fearing men of that generation do? They took the logs of wood and made them into ladders, which they carried on their shoulders and proceeded on their journey. When they reached the guards, they were asked, "Whither are you going?" They replied, "We are going with the ladders on our shoulders to take down young pigeons from the dovecot at a place further on." When they had gone away from the guards, they dismantled the ladders and brought them to Jerusalem. And it is of the men of men like them that Scripture says, "The memory of the righteous shall be for a blessing." And of Jeroboam and his companions, the verse adds, "But the name of the wicked shall rot on the twentieth of the same month." The family of Pahat Moab Atan taught the sons of Pahat Moab Judah are identical with the sons of David, the son of Judah. This is the opinion of our Meir. Our Judah says they are identical with the sons of Job. Bezerai on the twentieth of Elul, the family of Adin, the son of Judah. Our rabbis have taught the sons of Adin, the son of Judah, are the same as the sons of David, the son of Judah. This is the opinion of our Judah. Our Jose says they are the same as the sons of Job, the son of Zerai on the first. Of Tabith, the family of Barash a second time, etc., with whose view does the mission agree? It is neither with the view of Armeir nor with that of Arjudan nor with that of Arjose. If it were in agreement with the view of Armeir, then the mission would read the sons of David be Judah a second time. Should it be with that of Arjudan, then it should read the sons of David be Judah a second time. If with that of Arjose, then it should read the sons of Job be Zira a second time. The mission actually agrees with the view of Arjose, but there are two Tanaim in dispute as to what Arjose's view was on the first of Tabith. There was no Maimad, etc. Markashi saw the son of Arhista ask Arashi Talmud, Mas Tainat B. Why is hell different that it suspends its own Maimad while Musaf does not supersede its own Maimad? Arashi replied, If Musaf suspends the Maimad of a service of which it is not part, I even all the more should it suspend its own Maimad. Arkashi saw then said, This is what I. Mean to say, let it Musaf suspend its own Mayamad. Only Arashi replied, There is Arhose who holds the same view as you, for it has been taught. Arhose says, Any day on which there is Musaf, there is also a Mayamad. Now, which Mayamad is here referred to? Shall I say the Mayamad of the Shaharat? Surely the first ten of our mission also says, Likewise, is it the Mayamad of the Musaf? Does not Musaf suspend even its own Mayamad? Is it the Mayamad of Minha? But this is already suspended because of it. Wood festival, it must then surely be the Mayamad of any Isla. Hence, the conclusion therefrom that Musaf suspends its own Mayamad, but it does not suspend the Mayamad of any other service. Hence, it is proved. Let the mission also state that there was no Mayamad on the first of Nisan because there was Halal and Musaf offering, and the wood offering robber replied, This proves that the recital of Halal on New Moon is not a biblical injunction for Aryohan and said in the name of Arsimian B. Jose Dagon. Eighteen days in the year the individual worshipper completes the hell and they are the eight days of the Feast of Tabernacles, the eight days of Hanukkah, the first day of Passover and the festival of Pentecost, but in the diaspora the hell is completed on twenty-one days and they are the nine days of the Feast of Tabernacles, the eight days of Hanukkah, the first two days of Passover and the two days of Pentecost. Rab once came to Babylonia and he noticed that they recited the hell on new moon. At first he thought of stopping them but when he saw that they omitted parts of it he remarked it is clearly evident that it is an old ancestral custom with them. Atan taught the individual should not deliberately begin to recite the hell but once he has begun he should complete it. Five misfortunes befell our fathers on the seventeenth of Tammuz etc. Once is it known that the tables of the law were shattered on the seventeenth of Tammuz for it has been taught on the sixth of it. Month of seven, the Ten Commandments were given to Israel. Our Jose says on the seventh of the month, he who says that they were given on the sixth takes the view that on the sixth they were given, and on the seventh Moses ascended the mount, and he who says that they were given on the seventh holds that they were given on the seventh, and on the seventh Moses ascended the mount, for it is written, and the seventh day he called unto Moses, and it is further written, and Moses entered into the midst of the cloud and went up into the mount, and Moses was in the mount forty days and forty nights, the remaining twenty-four days of seven, and the sixteen days of Tammuz make altogether forty. On the seventeenth of Tammuz he came down from the mountain and shattered the tables, as it is written, and it came to pass as soon as he came nigh unto the camp that he saw the calf, and he cast the tables out of his hands and broke them beneath the mount. The daily offering was discontinued. This is a Tradition a breach was made in the city. Did this then happen on the seventeenth? Is it not written in the fourth month in the ninth day of the month? The famine was sore in the city, etc. And in the following verse it is written, and a breach was made in the city, etc. Rabbah said, This is no contradiction. The one refers to the first temple and the other to the second temple, for it has been taught in the first temple the breach was made in the city on the ninth of Tammuz, but in the second temple on the seventeenth of Tammuz, Apostomus burned the scroll of the law. This is a tradition and placed an idol in the temple. Whence do we know this? For it is written, and from the time that the continual burnt offering shall be taken away, and the detestable thing that caused the palmen set up was there then only one detestable thing. Is it not written, and upon the wing of detestable things shall be that which caused the palmen? Rabbah replied, There were two idols, and one fell upon the other and broke its. Hand and upon it was found inscribed Talmud, Mastayanatha you desired to destroy the temple but I have handed over your hand to him on the ninth of it was decreed that our fathers should not enter the promised land whence do we know this for it is written and it came to pass in the first month in the second year on the first day of the month that the tabernacle was reared up and regarding this verse a master said in the first year Moses built the tabernacle in the second year Moses erected the tabernacle and sent out spies further it is written and it came to pass in the second year in the second month on the twentieth day of the month that the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle of testimony and it is further written and they set forward from the mount of the Lord three days journey and our Hamabi Hanan explained this means that on that day they turned aside from after the Lord and it is further written and the mixed multitude that was among them fell lusting. And the children of Israel also wept on their part, etc. And it is further written, but a whole month, etc. That brings us up to the twenty-second of seven. And it is further written, and Miriam was shut up without the camp seven days. That brings us up to the twenty-ninth of seven. And it is further written, send out men. And it has been taught Moses sent out spies on the twenty-ninth of seven. And it is further written, and they returned from spying out the land at the end of forty days. But is not this forty days less one? Abbe replied, Tammuz of that year was a full month of thirty days. For it is written, he had called a solemn assembly against me to crush my young men. And it is further written, and all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried. And the people wept that night. Rabbi said in the name of our Yohanan, that night was the night of the ninth of the holy one. Blessed be he said to them, You have wept without cause. Therefore I will set this day aside for a weeping throughout. The generations to come on the ninth of the temple was destroyed the first time for it is written now in the fifth month on the seventh day of the month which was the nineteenth year of King Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon came Nebuchadnezzar the captain of the guard a servant of the king of Babylon unto Jerusalem and he burnt the house of the Lord etc. And it is further written now in the fifth month in the tenth day of the month which was the nineteenth year of King Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon came Nebuchadnezzar the captain of the guard who st
Amin Rash and called out the nose man is wanted. The nose man is wanted. When Argamaliel heard this, he hid himself there upon the officer, went up secretly to him and said, If I save you, will you bring me into the world to come? He replied, Yes, he then asked him, Will you swear it unto me? And the latter took an oath. The officer then mounted the roof and threw himself down and died. Now there was a tradition amongst the Romans that when a decree is made and one of their own leaders dies, then that decree is annulled. Thereupon a voice from heaven was heard declaring, This high officer is destined to enter into the world to come. Our rabbis have taught when the first temple was about to be destroyed, bands upon bands of young priests with the keys of the temple in their hands assembled and mounted the roof of the temple and exclaimed, Master of the universe, as we did not have the merit to be faithful treasurers, these keys are handed back into thy keeping, they then threw the keys up towards heaven and there emerged the figure of a hand and received the keys from them whereupon they jumped and fell into the fire it is an illusion to them that the prophet Isaiah laments the burden concerning the valley of vision what aileth thee now that thou art holy God up to the housetops thou that art full of uproar a tumultuous city a joyous town thy slain are not slain with the sword nor dead in battle of the holy one blessed be he also it is said kir shouting and crying at the mount with the beginning of the rejoicings are curtailed rab judah the son of our samuel be said in the name of rab just as with the beginning of the rejoicings are curtailed so with the beginning of the rejoicings are increased talmud must be our papa said therefore a jew who has any litigation with gentiles should avoid him in it because his luck is bad and should make himself available in it or when his luck is good to give you a future and a hope rab judah the son of our samuel be said in the name of Rabbi, this is meant an abundance of palm trees and flax and garments, and he said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which the Lord hath blessed. Rab Judah, the son of our Samuel, Bishalat said, In the name of Rab, as the smell of an apple orchard during the week in which the ninth of it falls, it is forbidden to cut the hair and to wash clothes. Arnaman said, This restriction only applies to the washing of clothes for immediate wear, but the washing of clothes for storing is permissible. Arshis hate said, It is forbidden to wash clothes even for storing. Arshis hate said, A proof for this is that the fullers in the house of Rab are then idle. Arham unraised an objection on Thursday, It is permissible in honor of the Sabbath. What is permissible, shall I say, it is to wash clothes for immediate wear. Where does the honor of the Sabbath enter into it? It must surely mean washing clothes for storing till Sabbath, and this is permissible only on Thursday, but not during. Other days of the week in reality the mission refers to the washing of clothes for immediate wear and it speaks of a case where a man has only one shirt for R.C. said in the name of our Yohanan when a man has one shirt only he may wash it in the middle days of the festival so too it has been stated our Benjamin said in the name of our Eliezer the restriction applies only to washing clothes for immediate wear but washing clothes for storing is permissible an objection was raised against this it is forbidden to wash clothes before the ninth of Abib and for storing them until after the ninth of Abib our Babylonian laundry work is like their Palestinian plain washing in respect of this prohibition but flax and garments are not included in this prohibition against laundry work this is indeed a refutation our Isaac B.G. Uri sent a message in the name of our Yohanan although the rabbis declared that flax and garments are not included in the prohibition against laundry work yet it is Forbidden to wear them newly laundered in the week in which the ninth of the falls. Rab said this applies to the days before the ninth of it, but on the days after it, it is permissible to wear them. Samuel said even on the days after the ninth of it is forbidden to wear them. An objection was raised against this the week in which the ninth of the falls. It is not permissible to cut the hair or to wash clothes, but on Thursday it is permissible in honor of the Sabbath. How is this to be understood? Should it fall on Sunday, it is permissible to wash clothes the whole of the week, but should it fall on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday before it, it is not permissible, but after it, it is permissible. Should it fall on Friday, it is permissible to wash clothes on Thursday in honor of the Sabbath. If however he has not washed them on the Thursday, it is permissible to wash them on the Friday from the hour of Minha onwards. Abay and some say Arahabi Jacob expressed his strongest. Disapproval of anyone who acted so should the ninth of it fall on Monday or on Thursday. Three people read the law and of these the last one also reads the prophet Ica lesson. But should it fall on Tuesday or Wednesday, one reads the law and he also reads the prophet Ica lesson. Our Jose says invariably three persons read the law and the last one of these also reads the prophet Ica lesson. Will not this very be a refutation of Samuel who holds that it is not permissible to wash clothes? Even on the days after the ninth of it, Samuel will reply. Tanaim are divided on this point for it has been taught should the ninth of it fall on the Sabbath and likewise if the eve of the ninth of it falls on the Sabbath one may eat and drink as much as he needs and he may load his table with as many vines as Solomon in his time did. But it is forbidden to cut the hair and to wash clothes from the beginning of the month until after the fast. This is the opinion of our Meir Judah says it is. Forbidden the whole month, our Simeon B. Gamaliel says it is forbidden only on that particular week and elsewhere it has been taught and morning is observed from the beginning of the month until the fast. This is the opinion of our Meir Arjuna says it is forbidden the whole month, our Simeon B. Gamaliel says it is forbidden only on that particular week, said our Yohanan. All three authorities adduce their ruling from the same scriptural verse, for it is written, I will also cause all her mirth to cease her. Feast her new moons and her Sabbaths, the one who says from the beginning of the month until the fast Talmud, Mas Tayanath adduces his opinion from her feast, the one who says it is forbidden the whole month from her new moons and the one who says it is forbidden the whole week from her Sabbaths, Rabbah said the Halachah is according to our Simeon B. Gamaliel and Rabbah further said the Halachah is according to our Meir and both decisions are in favor of the more lenient practice and both are needed. To be stated for had it only been stated that the Halachah is according to our Meir I might have said that the restriction is enforced from the beginning of the month therefore it is also clearly stated that the Halachah is according to our Simeon B. Gamaliel and had it only been stated that the Halachah is according to our Simeon B. Gamaliel I would have said that the restriction continues even on the days after the ninth of it therefore it is clearly stated that the Halachah is according to our Meir on the eve of the ninth of it one may not partake of a meal of two courses etc. Rab Judah said this restriction applies to any time after midday but not to any time before midday Rab Judah further said it applies only to the concluding meal before the fast but not to any other meal and both decisions are in favor of the more lenient practice and both are needed to be stated for had it only mentioned the concluding meal I would have said that the restriction held good of a meal partaken. Even at any time before midday, therefore, it is clearly stated from midday onwards, and had it only mentioned from midday onwards, I would have said that the restriction held good of a meal, even though it be not the concluding meal. Therefore, it is clearly stated that it must be the concluding meal. It has been taught according to the first statement, and it has also been taught according to the second statement. It has been taught according to the second statement. One who has a meal on the eve of it, ninth of it, if it is his intention to have another meal later, he may eat meat and drink wine. But if not, he may not eat meat nor drink wine. It has also been taught according to the first statement on the eve of the ninth of it. One may not partake of a meal of two courses, nor may he eat meat nor drink wine. Our Simeon B. Gamaliel says he should make a difference in his diet. What constitutes a difference in diet? If one is in the habit of having two courses, he should have one only, and if he usually Dines in the company of ten persons he should dine with five if it is his usual practice to drink ten cups of wine he should drink five only these restrictions apply only to meals partaken from midday onwards but not to meals partaken at any time before midday another buried the taught on the eve of the ninth of a man may not partake of a meal of two courses he should not eat meat nor drink wine this is the opinion of our mayor but the sages say he should make a difference in his diet and restrict his consumption of meat and wine how should one restrict if he was in the habit of eating one pound of meat he should eat one half only if it is his usual practice to drink one log of wine he should drink one half log only but if he is not in the habit of partaking any of these things he may not have these at all our Simeon B. Gamaliel said if it was his habit to eat radish or savory after his meal he may do so if he wishes another buried the taught at the meal intended to be the Concluding one prior to the fast of the ninth of it is forbidden to eat meat or to drink w
is bad for how long must meat remain in salt so as to render it permissible for the length of time that peace offering may be eaten how long is wine considered new as long as it remains in its first stage of fermentation a tanid taught the law forbidding the use of liquids left uncovered does not apply to new wine in the first stage of fermentation and how long does it take to ferment three days rab judah said in the name of rab the following was the practice of Arjuda bilai on the eve of the ninth of there was brought to him dry bread with salt and he would take his seat talmud must be between the baking oven and the cooking stove and eat and he would drink with it a pitcher full of water and he would appear as if a near relation were lying dead before him elsewhere we have learned where it is a custom to do work on the ninth of we may do work but where it is not the custom we may not and everywhere the scholars refrain from work our simian begamaliel says in this respect a man should always consider himself a scholar it has been taught likewise our simian begamaliel says in this respect let a man always consider himself a scholar that he may feel more strongly the fast a very the taught our simian begamaliel says anyone who eats or drinks on the ninth of his as if he ate and drank on the day of atonement our Akiva says anyone who does work on the ninth of will never see in his work any sign of blessing and the sages say anyone who does work on the ninth of Abed does not mourn for Jerusalem will not cheer in her joy as it is said rejoice ye with Jerusalem and be glad with her all yet that love her rejoice for joy with her all yet that mourn for her from this originates what the rabbis have said everyone who mourns for Jerusalem merits to cheer in her joy and anyone who does not mourn for her will not cheer in her joy it has also been taught likewise of him who eats meat and drinks wine on the ninth of scripture says and their iniquities are upon their bones Arjuna makes it obligatory to turn the bed over but the wise did not agree with him and this it has been taught the sages said to Arjuna if your view is followed what will happen to pregnant women and nursing mothers he replied to them I too meant my statement to apply only where it is possible it has also been taught likewise Arjuna agrees with the sages where it is not possible to overturn the beds and the sages agree with Arjuna where it is possible what is the real difference between them the difference between them arises in the case of other beds not used for sleeping as it has been taught when the rabbi said that a man should turn over the bed they meant not only his own bed but also all the beds in the house rabbi said the halachah is according to our tana but the sages would not accept his arjuna's view at all our simian begamaliel said there never were in israel greater days of joy than the 15th of the day of atonement i can understand the day of atonement because it is a day of forgiveness and pardon and on it the second tables of the law were given but what happened on the 15th of the judah said in the name of samuel it is a day on which permission was granted to the tribes to intermarry once may this be a scripture says this is the thing which the lord hath commanded concerning the daughters of zelophi etc meaning this thing shall hold good for this generation only are Joseph said in the name of Arnon, it is the day on which the tribe of Benjamin was permitted to re-enter the congregation of Israel as it is said now the men of Israel had sworn in Mizpah saying there shall not any of us give his daughter unto Benjamin to wife from what was their exposition Rab said from the phrase any of us which was interpreted to mean but not from any of our children Rab will be said in the name of our Yohanan it is the day on which the generation of the wilderness ceased to die out for a master said so long as the generation of the wilderness continued to die out there was no divine communication to Moses as it is said so it came to pass when all the men of war were consumed and dead that the Lord spake unto me only then came the divine communication unto me Ola said it is the day on which Hosea the son of Ola removed the guards which Jeroboam the son of Nebat had placed on the roads to prevent Israel from going up to Jerusalem on pilgrimage and he proclaimed Talmud, Mas Hayat to let them go up to whichever shrine they desire. Our Mahana said it is the day when permission was granted for those killed at Bethar to be buried. Our Mahana further said on the day when permission was granted for those killed at Bethar to be buried. The rabbis at Jabna instituted the recitation of the benediction who are kind and dealest kindly, etc. Who are kind because their dead bodies did not become putrid and dealest kindly because permission was granted for their burial. Rabbi and our Joseph both said it is the day on which every year they discontinued to fell trees for the altar. It has been taught our Eliezer the elder says from the 15th of the onwards the strength of the sun grows less and they no longer fell trees for the altar because they would not dry sufficiently. Our said and they called it the day of the breaking of the axe from this day onwards. He who increases his knowledge through study will have his life. Prolonged, but he who does not increase his knowledge will have his life taken away. What is meant by taken away? Our Joseph learned him his mother will bury on these days the daughters of Jerusalem, etc. Our rabbis have taught the daughter of the king borrows the garments from the daughter of the high priest, the daughter of the high priest from the daughter of the deputy high priest, and the daughter of the deputy high priest from the daughter of the anointed for battle, and the daughter of the anointed for battle from the daughter of an ordinary priest, and all Israel borrow from one another so as not to put to shame anyone who may not possess white garments. All the garments require ritual dipping. Our Eliezer said, even though they lay folded in a box, the daughters of Israel came out and danced in the vineyards. A tanned taught whoever was unmarried repaired thither those of them who came of noble families exclaimed, young men, etc. Our rabbis have taught the beautiful amongst them called. Outset your eyes on beauty for the quality most to be prized in woman is beauty those of them who came of noble families called out look for a good family for woman has been created to bring up a family the ugly ones amongst them called out carry off your purchase in the name of heaven only on one condition that you adorn us with jewels of gold all of said in the name of our Eliezer in the days to come the holy one blessed be he will hold the chorus for the righteous and he will sit in their midst in the garden of Eden and every one of them will point with his finger towards him as it is said and it shall be said in that day lo this is our God for whom we waited that he might save us this is the Lord for whom we waited we will be glad and rejoice in his salvation.